Toby Coates. Present. Eric Robinson. Present. Or Palestrini, present. We have a quorum, also present. I don't trust you. What are you? Trusty Lionel Mott, <laughs> President Mike Reed. Um, the gang's all here. Yeah. Aaron Kelly, I think, is online then? Yes, yeah. I'm online. Yes. Trusty and Heather Fodor? Okay. The forum has been established. We will begin with public comments. Did everybody that wants to speak sign in? I have now since corrected. You have since. Okay. We'll start in order of receipt. Um, Jeannie Meyer. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Village Budget Committee for allowing me to speak today on behalf of the business community of the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. As many of you know, I took on the role of executive director in 2020, and at that time we had about 75 members. Uh, the primary goals that I had at the start were very simple, to help foster a good working relationship with the village, to create partnerships with other organizations within our community, to grow the chamber's membership and create events that build up the community and bring customers to our local businesses. Over the past three years, the chamber has grown to 136 members. Our partnership with the village has been very strong with open communication between our boards. Um, and our community, our community is becoming very well known for the events that we host here in the village. Uh, the chamber, along with the village, the park district, the Ella Johnson Library, and other nonprofit organizations have worked together to make memorable moments that benefit the village, the community, and our local businesses. A few years ago, the village began a partnership with the chamber to help promote tourism and overnight stays in the village. In exchange for a grant from the village, the chamber promotes tourism with every event that we host. Our tagline, Make Your Visit an Overnight Stay in Hampshire, is part of all of our social media flyers, our content, our newspaper and radio ads. Uh, we promote overnight stays at our outdoor markets that take place all through the summer, through our street dance, our holidays on state, um, and our cross promotion of the Village's Jingle Fest event and trunk or treat events, and that's just to name a few. Um, the Village's grant to the Chamber has been a vital part of our operating budget, and it is my hope that the Village will continue to partner with the Chamber in this regard. Um, as with just about every other chamber in the country, membership dues received by the Hampshire Area Chamber cover only about 50% of our operations. The remainder comes from hosting events. Um, Village Manager Hedges has informed me that the Budget Committee is considering levying fees on organizations that hold events in the downtown area. Um, while I understand the, villages, the Village incurs costs for supporting these events, I would like to impress upon you that these events are not huge money makers for those organizations, but rather free public events that are sponsored by local businesses. They're intended to bring people to the downtown to celebrate, as well as to spend their money in our local businesses, which in turn brings tax dollars to the village. Um, it's a symbiotic relationship. What's good for the businesses is good for the village. Uh, when people come downtown for an event, they spend the money in our stores and our restaurants, generating increased tax dollars for the village. I would respectfully ask this committee and the village board to consider very carefully the effect of levying hefty event fees on nonprofits who wish to host celebrations in the downtown and the impact that that would have on our ability to bring events downtown. The Chamber of Commerce understands that the village is undergoing growing pains with all the new development and the increase in village services that goes along with that. And we hope the village will continue to support the chamber and other nonprofits that create events that highlight the village of Hampshire and all of our local businesses. We want to thank you for your time and your consideration and fill up the task, task of balancing the village budget. Thank you so much. Hey, Gina Pearson. Do you want to start your thing, Ryan, first about the... Um, oh. Um, the facade program? Certainly. I mean, I, I can go now if that makes sense. Yeah, I will. Yeah. But yeah, I, I because guess it's ours okay goes with that, or does. Okay. Why don't you go up and just testify on your behalf, and then I'll finish. Okay. That, that All right. Sense. 
Brian's a little bit long, more long-winded than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 12 pages. And, and, that's not saying, talking about. and that's not saying a whole lot. Um, my name is Gina Pearson. Um, I am a business owner in the village. Um, actually, we are celebrating 87 years of being a brick-and-mortar business to this village this month. Um, I own uh, The Cave, which was previously um, Chuck's Pub um, for many, many years in our family. Um, we were uh, recently uh, recipients of the Facade Program, um, and we just wanted to say how important that was to our business and um, being a building that was one of the original buildings um, to Hampshire in the downtown business district. Um, it's an ongoing project, you know, and that that building is just, you know, constant. And with the, you know, coming out of COVID and, you know, like, everybody else in their businesses struggling to keep alive. Um, a third generation business, we really, really try and put forth the effort in making our business survive as long as we can. And doing that, we want to also try and make it look as beautiful as possible. And, you know, you guys <coughs> do the downtown and are doing these projects and, um, the facade program came about a few years ago, and we weren't too for sure about all of the things that were involved with it. And then I heard about it, and then COVID started, and then I was not for sure if it was still going or not. And so then um, Bill Swabal had approached me, and he said, Gina, you know, uh, or I had reached out to Bill, and I said, you know, what is this all about? And so he kind of guided me and um, with his help and Ryan's help on a few questions, um, we started and we were rewarded uh, by the skin of our teeth um, last year, one of your, your last grants that was provided. And uh, with that, we were able to put on a desperately needed roof and um, some paint, and um, I don't know if you all remember the before and after pictures that were presented to the committee, but it was uh, pretty, pretty astonishing that the work that was able to be done, and without, without the blessings of that, um, that grant, it, it wouldn't have been done as soon as it would have been done. So I would just encourage you all to keep, you know, once a program is started, it's so hard to bring back into a budget. And, um, you know, there was a lot of work that was involved in bringing this program to, to the village. And I think it's just been great seeing all the other businesses in town um, take advantage of, of the program that's out there. And um, I see a lot of new businesses coming into town and buying into uh, some of the older businesses, uh, buildings. And I think they're going to, if it's available, be encouraged to take advantage of, of the facade program. And I think that's a very juicy, bonus when buying a piece of real estate and looking at um, bringing your business to Hampshire. Um, and so I just encourage you all when thinking about your budget to um, keep including the facade program if it's possible, because I um, really appreciated being a recipient of that program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, Kelly Zofsky. Thank you. I'm going to actually pass this around. 
Keep it quick because I know you have a lot of people in here, so I don't want to share with your families. Um, Gina kind of opened up everything, and we're here, Jeff and I, as well for the facade program and hoping that you continue it um, through next year. So, Jeff and I have been personally involved in four different properties, right? Blocks, the doctor's office across the way, and then the two properties on Washington. Um, we were personally involved with the two properties on Washington. One, I feel, may be the biggest transformation of the town of Hampshire, which would be the laundry mat. Um, you can agree with me or disagree with me, but if you look at the at the pictures in that book, you may or may not see that. Um, we have kept an eye on all the different projects and all the different um, facade programs, specifically because we really appreciate what you guys did for us. We would not have been, as a rescue, we would not have been able to buy that property knowing that we were not able to get the grant. And so many wonderful things have come because of that. I could be here all night and talk about that, but I don't I don't want to bore you. I just wanted to give you maybe some different perspective from someone who's downtown all the time and hears different comments. So, for example, uh, the doctor's office. I had that listed. Could it have sold? When it was blue, of course it could have, but I feel that it's sold and now a new build, a new business is coming in because of the way it looks. Not to mention, when you're sitting at the copper barrel, it's a very pretty view, so that's great. Blocks, of course, is kind of understandable. It's a uh, staple in our community. Anything we can do to modernize it and make it look better and, and bring in the younger crowd is fantastic. Um, moving on to Washington, we have what I like to reference, Hound Dog Hall sure you've all seen it or heard, um, and then the house next door. There honestly is on a day that does not go by when we're outside that we get thanked or a thumbs up or a great job for how wonderful everything looks, and that's because of what the town allowed us to do. As a rescue, we could not have done that. Uh, just the other day, I was in the post office and Fred Rackow, a pillar of our community, walked up to me and, and patted me on the back, and he said, you and Jeff make me proud. Now, he was my guidance counselor. And I saw both of us, right? <laughs> and you, know, you make us proud. And I go, well, what did you do? And he said, you're keeping Hampshire alive. You're keeping Hampshire beautiful. Thank you. And that just, that really got to me because it, it was another something I did because of the recognition. It was something I did because we love the town, born and raised. So I, I, you know, I can't say anything other than that. Um, to kind of piggyback off of Gina, I believe that the, um, and I can't speak for the Hampshire Social, but I think because of the beautification that they received, they were able to come in young, two young couples coming in, bringing something beautiful, bringing something different to downtown. And that has actually, I believe, brought the cave business um, because Dave, co-owner, asked me the other day to do a wine tasting. I said, Wow, a wine tasting in the cave. You're really like, <laughs> it up. And I said, what, what, what do you do with this? And he said, well, he goes, we're getting a lot of business from Hampshire Social because they close at nine or they may be closed. But, and you may be seeing this as well, Michelle, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So the fact that another business is bringing an 87, did you say 87 years? 87 years. 87 year old business, additional business is fantastic in my opinion. Um, so, and, and as Jeannie had mentioned, all these wonderful downtown events have brought so much recognition to the downtown as well as the rescue. I don't know if, how many of you are animal people, but I can tell you that there was a 10 year old dog rescued off of the euthanasia list in Alabama simply because of the ice sculpture crawl. Somebody saw us, we were in there, they were able to call and say, will you take this dog in? We will save it if Guardian Angel takes it in. They didn't know we existed, other than they saw the ice sculpture call record for um, advertised, and they were in the building. So to me, that's what it's all about as a rescue. So that's very important to us. Um, I would really hate to see the downtown lose momentum by either discontinuing um, the program or taking a break in one way or another. Even if you have to lower the budget a little bit to stay within budget, I get that. As self-employed people, I understand budgets. So I would just really hate to see the momentum lost. I don't know how many of you know, I'm a realtor in town, um, as well as I own a company that does fundraising for nonprofits. Nothing is more disheartening than when I have a really successful event and I do my debriefing meeting with them the next week or two weeks after. And I say, wonderful event, we raised a ton of money. Same date next year. 
And they say, oh, we did so good. We're going to take a year off. I really think that's a bad way to look at things. I really think keeping the momentum going is what this town needs. Because what we've seen happen so far is wonderful, and I would hate to see it go backwards or halt. So, thank you for your time. Thank you. Carol Thompson. Ready? How are you? I'm just going to have a little handout. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. For those who don't know me, obviously I'm Carl Panzano, president of Hampshire Coon Creek. I'm here to I sent a letter for funding requests for this year's event, and I'm here to justify some of the costs that I'm asking for. Um, I handed out kind of like a mini spreadsheet of what the actual costs are going to be for this year. And you, as I've always been discussing, it's substantial. Um, our biggest one, obviously, is going to be the security that we had. And we went from 8,800 last year, we're up to 12,600 this year. Last year, we had $20,000 invested in the fireworks. To put the same show on it. It was a 25% increase. It's going to be 25000 for the same show. So looking at the sheet, everything has gone up. I have a question mark on the corn as far as we don't know what the corn price will be back in August time. Um, I'm just, you know, having you guys reconsider thinking what we're doing. Um, reason for the, for the funding, again, is the security is a big, important part. Did these... This company is going to be top notch from what we've used in the past. Our worst nightmare is a lost child. Okay, so these guys are trained. They're, they have EMTs on staff. They have um, some of their personnel are trained for crowd control management. I was talking to the chief about it at our last meeting. Um, they're top notch. That, that's why they're going to be a little more expensive. We, the places that we've used the last few years, not recommended whatsoever. Um, our biggest concern, again, is the weather. If we don't have additional funds to cover our costs, we should have inclement weather. We're done. Last year we closed up at 2 o'clock. We opened at 1, we closed at 2 o'clock. We normally close at 5. We lost $6,000 in that three and a half hours. Plus, you can see the condition of the field, how we have to renovate that whole field the way it is right now because of the rain that came in. So I'm asking you just to reconsider what I had asked for, and I'll answer any questions if you need. Mr. Thompson, I have one question because it's before my time. Um, what was the amount of money that the village had given you in years past? <clears throat> I've heard of $10,000 that was raised, and then it jumped up to nineteen. And I can answer that. Um, from, 18, from 1983 to 2001, there was no funding from the village for the bird fest, whether it was called Old Fashioned Days, Coon Creek Days, Hampshire Coon Creek Days, there was nothing. In 2001, and I only learned this because of the Historical Society event that they had last week. <laughs> In 2001, the village promised $3,000 to the committee. In 2002, they also promised $3,000. The committee didn't get that money until 2003. They sat on it. They gave them a check for $6,000. We, and I have another newspaper article, if you want to give that to this one, Mark. This one, no, not that one. In 2009, we had $480 in our checking account. We decided that we were going to disband the committee and just quit. There's a newspaper article from the Daily Herald concerning this. Then President Magnuson, because we, we talked to him, got wind of it, and he said, absolutely not. He organized meetings over the professional building behind Chicken. And on a Thursday, I believe it was, we had like over 75 people attend. They were all gun haul. They were all, oh, yeah, we, we can't let this die out, blah, 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 blah. We held another meeting two weeks later, 
with about 27 people showed up out of the 70. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, there were seven. Bottom line is we gained two committee members, and President Magnuson at that point said that the village would start donating $10,000 every year going forward. I have I actually printed out all the payables. I have a I have a copy of 2012, we got $10,000, and I got a copy of 2017, we got $10,000. There's no record on the website of any payables for 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. There, there's just nothing in, there's just no, nothing. I, print, I printed out two years worth, I'm, I'm not gonna print any more out. <laughs> So to answer your question, we started getting $10,000 in 2009. Mean 10? 10,000. The last five checks that we've gotten in the last five years, in 2017, we got 8,000, 2018, 20,000, 2019, 16,000, 2021, 29,000, that was year after COVID, and then last year, 19,000. I have copies of all those checks if you need to see those also. Can you repeat that, please? 2017 was 8,000. Okay. 2018 was 20,000. Okay. 2019 was 16. 2021 was 29. And 2022 was 19. So the last time we got 10,000 then was going back to 2009? No, um, I'm oh, you sure said you couldn't find I couldn't find a record of 2016. I'm sure we've gotten it, but there's just no record of it. Okay. So continued of $10,000 through, assuming 2016, 2017. It moved down. I'm, I'm guessing from 2010 through 2017, it's $10,000, 8000 It fluctuated because uh, President Reed had a radio station lined up. So some of the proceeds that were going to Coon Creek were diverted to the radio station to pay for them to come. We were trying to promote the overnight stays and try to give the chamber some ground as well. That was, was like two, two to four grand, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah one the year it was 1,700, we cut it down a little bit, but you're right, Mr. Cole, it was probably about 2,000, 3,000 hours. I was gonna say, I've been I've been a part of this village for since 2013, and I'm pretty positive. I don't have an alternative, but I'm pretty positive we've given it Creek every year since I've been here. Oh, I, I, we, I believe we, you. We, I, believe we, I just couldn't find anything in the, in the no, panels. And I think in our minutes, it'll show each year the board, since I've been here for eight years, voted for 10 grand. So the 29 is perplexing. I'd like to. So I, I, remember the 20, yeah. I remember the 29,000. Mm -hmm. I can explain the 29. I remember because they didn't do it the one year before, and so we rolled it over to the following year. I that, that. that was the 19. No, that was uh, no, that's 29. The one year that they didn't have because of COVID, we gave them that 10 grand the following year uh, on top of the 10 grand we were. Uh, no, I can explain. It was 29, so we, we combined both years. Mm -hmm. I originally asked for 34, I'll be honest with you, because 2020, we didn't have it. I assumed that all that money in the hotel motel tax was sitting there. I did not know that it was used for marketing purposes also. And I and I talked to you about that. So I thought, well, well, you know, we didn't know how it was going to come up with donation wise. So we went with 34. I came to the board meeting before the budget was established, pleaded my case, and we negotiated to 29,000. Going back to the numbers from 2017, we had 8,000. Can you get a copy of the checks here? Is he I, I, yeah, I, then I'll, I'll look at that. I guess I'm going to put down here. So that was 8,000. And then 2018, it dropped up to 20. Correct. What was the reason for that increase? To be honest with you, I'm, I'm sure it was like costs again. Okay. No, there was a there was a there was a substantial amount of money in the hotel motel tax, and then there was a jump in costs, and so we felt at the time that since there was money excess not excess money but more money in the in the account that we could afford to give some of it up because at the time there really wasn't a whole lot of use out of that money, and it wasn't until Mr. Hedges came on board that we kind of it used to be pretty hard nosed as far as what we could use that money for. It had to promote direct tourism. Until Mr. Hedges came on board and really looked into the, for the I'll say semantics of the law and we realized we can use some of it for other things. One of which is that that if the uh, hotel <coughs> would require some kind of repairs, they could ask the village for a grant, uh, and we would pay out of that account as well, much like a facade improvement grant. So I mean, the hotel hasn't made any mention of that or hadn't made any plans, but 
that's all that's also is a use for them to come as well. But you'll see in this further on in the budget, if we continue this pace, this will be the last year. There'll, there'll be no more money in that in that account. Assuming that this is close to the fund. Well, I mean, the fund will be depleted. I mean, I, I have Lori's budget. Um, we get it every year. We don't get 80, 80K every year. Oh, no, no, no. Money no, comes, in, the money comes in every no, year, but, but it's going out faster and it's coming in. So I think if, if we look in the budget right now, there's probably 29 grand in there or 30 grand. So if we do the 29, this will be the last year that the village will have any funding available for Coon Creek. That's a problem. Okay, I have printouts of the projections from Lori's budget in the past. And it looks like she was very low on the on the on the projections. I'll just go back to 2012. Her projection was going to have fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars in that account. Yet the village came up with ten thousand dollars for us. If you, if you can go right across the board. They're very low amounts projected. Right. Well, and like I said, we have an excess fund because for a long time we didn't really use anything out of it, but the funding period. And so then again, we've been spending out of that fund for other purposes, the marketing and the social media and the fiber stuff and some of the uh, initiatives for the BDC in that where we pay for some of the subscriptions and the ESRI reports and that kind of stuff that we've done. Um, that all came out of the that all came out of the hotel motel tax at the time as well because again we have kind of an excess fund balance. So uh, Ms. Lyons, can you help me what what page is the hotel motel tax on? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't even have page numbers on No, that. that's okay. That's all right, I'll find it. Um it is fund number seven. Okay, great. Um, there it is. Okay, so the projected for fiscal 30, uh, 2023 would be about 30, and the projected, I don't have last year's projected for that fund. It's, yes. Well, is, it about, is it about, is it pretty static? So, oh, the prior year budget was 24, but this year to, we expect to receive about 30,000, so I, I mimicked it. In other words, receive thirty thousand in twenty twenty three, and therefore budgeted thirty thousand in twenty twenty four. So, so at the end of the day, to Toby's point, if we give more money to Coon Creek, and we can talk about this as far as after the public comment. Mm -hmm. But I think that maybe that's a better place for this discussion. Can we put a pin in this and move on to the Absolutely. rest? Absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna be here a while. I know. So, I know. So, so I and, and if there's input at that point. Why don't we? Are there sorry. Any, are there I have questions, questions online. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jesse Kelly. Uh, so the first one, uh, Mr. Palmazano, the amount that you're requesting from the village, what's that represent as the total percentage of of your expected budget for Coon Creek? You can't see the sheet, Mr. Kelly. Right now, we're projecting the budget to be around forty, or I'm sorry, ninety-four thousand dollars, give or take. Okay. And then. It's my understanding, and, and I think it's a great thing that, that the organization does, that at the end of every year, any leftover funds from the budget are donated to nonprofits. Is that accurate? And if so, how much has been donated over the past couple of years each year? Okay, we, we do, for our 501c3 um, mission, we do give money away. Last year, we gave a total of $4,500 out. Um, again, we have to make sure that we have enough startup costs. Um, in the past four or five years, we probably have given a total total of no more than eleven thousand dollars max. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? What do you have a number that you're going to be requesting for this year? For I have I sent that letter in nineteen thousand dollars. I'm accepting. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Kujeki. Uh, I make no promises to be brief. <laughs> Just kidding. It will be brief. Um, so good to see you guys. I'm so used to seeing you. Is it double space? Um, <laughs> Good evening. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, budget committee um, for allowing um, me to come speak. 
um, in front of you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Bill Ford um, for your faith in us for the years that we've been uh, doing our work. I'd also like to uh, thank Gina Pearson and uh, Jeff and uh, Kelly Zoffi. I didn't expect you guys to come and show um, uh, support for the program. But um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan Projector. Uh, I have been the chairman of the Business Development Commission for six years, pretty much its entire history. Um, and I wanted to come this evening to give you some perspective on where our journey began and why we believe that the SAD program is the instrument, uh, an instrumental component of the work that we do. When I first pitched this, uh, this idea to the Village Board I, uh, in 2018, some of you might remember, I gave a small speech. I'd like to quote uh, from that speech. Quote, it is a unique opportunity for us to be the board that brings downtown back and stakes our claim to commit to committing to being a village that belongs amongst the group of ex exceptional places to call home. In addition, it sends a message to prospective businesses that Hampshire is indeed open for business and is serious about creating a place where they can have success. It might be a gamble, but all great things come from uh, come with some measure of risk. Now, if anyone was to walk down that hallway and walk out that front door, I would expect that all of you would believe that that gamble was worth it. From the very beginning of this project, our group has understood that this program would eventually come to an end. Once we had corrected the multiple decades of negligence and restored Hampshire's downtown to something that matches the quality of the people who live here, then we could sunset that program. The purpose Okay. The purpose, of, I don't read speeches all the time, usually I just keep on the top of my head, but I felt this was important. Um, the purpose of me coming this evening is to share with you my view that this trend is not guaranteed to continue on its own just yet. While there will be a moment when it is right to sunset the program, that time has not arrived yet. There is still work to be done, and the importance of this program remains. The common conversation amongst our citizens before we undertook this project was how ugly and embarrassing our downtown was, how it was a ghost town. I recall many times my wife and I traveling back from baseball games or visiting family on a Sunday evening and coming back through State Street, there would not be a single car in downtown. I was also embarrassed. Now, however, however that has all changed. I am frequently approached by citizens who tell me how proud they are of the downtown, how much it means to them that they have a place to gather with their friends and neighbors. The commitment by this village board to stick with this program is the only reason they feel that way. It is my firm belief that a similar continuation of that commitment to its rightful completion will allow the project to come to its proper conclusion and sustain through the coming decade. I will speak extemporaneously for a few minutes. Um, we've done around 15 projects in the downtown. When we first started, I used to bring this conversation up with people, and people said it was impossible. It could not be done, right? We had gone probably for the better part of two decades without a single investment into the downtown area. Our budget, because of the 2008-2009 crisis, of course, was, um, you know, was assaulted by you know, needed cutbacks, you know, needed restrictions in money. And as a net result, we didn't have the money to do code enforcement. We didn't have the money, money to hold building owners accountable. Um, and we certainly didn't have the money to invest. We uh, set out through an argument that I made through de deficit spending, how oftentimes um, economies are more, uh, more than just dollars and cents. Oftentimes, economies are built around the idea of faith and belief. And if you can make a, 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 a concerted effort and a show of good faith, that other people would follow you and bring their investments to this town. I have been shocked over the last few years how many business owners have been approaching us, actually seeking with eagerness to move into our downtown. Now, while real estate is a difficult problem to solve because each particular business owner has different uses that are needed, um, you know, it is something that I uh, firmly believe that uh, if we continue going forward, um, that we will be able to fully uh, fill out not only the downtown, but all the way down into the chicken dip and then all the way up Washington. Um, so I just really want to impress on you guys to remember what the downtown looked like before we started this program, reflect on how it looks now, 
and even more importantly, dig into your imagination to see what it could be when we are done. Because the work that we have done so far is great, but the work that I think that we're going to do further is, is even more important. And I think the testimony of our business owners, um, this was a but for program. So but for program basically states, if not for this funding, this project wouldn't happen. I think we watched for two decades what uh, without having a but for looks like. It means nothing gets done. When we come in and we work diligently, and I, and I hope that you guys are familiar with the work that the Business Development Commission does to make sure that everyone lives up to it. Um, and that we make it a but for, it, along with some criticisms that we've received in the past, which are fair, and we've sought to correct those. Um, I'm just saying, I'm giving you credit, you're a smart guy. So um, I just, I really want you guys to consider very deeply how important this program means, not to me, um, but to the people that live here. Uh, the people that live here deserve a place to gather with their friends, and we are not done with that work, and I hope you seriously consider it. I also want to thank the members of the uh, Beautification Committee, who's, uh, without whose work, um, none of this would, would uh, be capable of uh, the uh, tremendous leadership from Bill Swallow, who's joining us online, who is the key to this whole program, um, along with uh, Gene Mayer and uh, Michelle McCoskey. So that's all I have to say. I really hope that uh, you uh, you weigh um, the experiences of your uh, citizens very uh, deeply and the prospects of a future downtown that uh, I think eventually needs to imagine. Thank you. Questions? Oh, yeah, I'm always willing to take questions. Chair Paul Street, can I just add some questions? Sure. Uh, since uh, Ryan mentioned it, we've done 17 projects. Seven. Uh, the village has invested $400,000 roughly, and the business is $200,000. We're a total investment of about $600,000. I only have one comment. Yes, I sat on uh, a BDC long before you were here yes. when it was uh, run by a former trustee, uh, sort of. And uh, what they did compared to what you guys done is astronomical. You guys should all be proud of what you've done. It's not even comparable. I know. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Karen from the BDC is also with us. She is the uh, her family owns Stanley Machining, and so she sits on our board um, as well. So thank you for coming. You mentioned we're not ready to sunset yes. this yet, and I completely understand that. Do you have, being a chairman, do you have a date in mind, a year in mind when we will be? I, I know we have a vision when everybody yes. improves their facade. Do you have any idea? That is amazing you asked that question. My wife told me that question was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea. Think about that because you're going to ask you. She um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, got good ideas. You should listen to it. Um, you know, it's hard to say. Um, I would imagine if, uh, you know, at, a, at, the, at the clip that we're at, you know, because her and I talked about it like last night, I think maybe four years, right? Four mm -hmm. or five years more. We're not looking at something that is in, uh, out in tune today. And I really want to make this point clear because, you know, I always considered when I sat on this board that my responsibility was to be a, um, uh, like a, a hedge fund manager, for lack of a better term, a fund manager for the people of Hampshire, right? And at the end of the day, we owe our responsibility to those people and not necessarily um, anybody else, specifically not board members. And uh, so it is important to use those funds with due diligence. I also want to mention that Places for Eating Tax was originally brought into play as a perpetual funding mechanism for the facade program, as a way to business owners put in, business owners take out. So in this way, it should not really cause a burden onto the people. Inside. But honestly, Eric, it's hard to say. Um, we certainly hope that uh, the people that own the, the lots uh, up Allen Road or up State Street to Allen Road want to develop that into a second level of downtown. Maybe. Um, so I don't know if that happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, I think four or five years is a reasonable amount of time. And uh, I think it is responsible to the people of Hampshire that at some point we do bring this to a close. I don't think that's time to see. You also brought up the places for eating tax. We, we originally started that at 1% and then added another 1% down to make it two for the purpose of funding this end. That no, was really on that process. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Lyons, can you say how much we take in? We took in this year from the eating tax? Um, yes, uh, that's projected on our. That's Sorry. It's on your budget sheet. Yeah, we got time. Yeah. There's more like 30. There's like five. I can turn a lap when you paper. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful.
Uh, it's none of the candidates. We estimate 278,000 for this receipts for this year. This will be point three. And as long as we're asking that question, I know this is public comments, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Then, um, is uh, what else does that fund get used for? Um, general fund operating purposes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we went back to the agenda supplement that was done at the time, the places for eating tax was initiated without a doubt. It was um, in part for in part. Yes, and I want to, you know, I want to yes. people. I also want to give credit to uh, um, former trustee Klein for it was her idea to come up with that, which I thought was genius. But yes, it was uh, in part was for that. So 100 of 278 is receiving the same. Mm -hmm. Can I ask too? Last year you were given for the budget hundred thousand dollars, and spent about hundred and sixty nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Quite a bit over budget. Yeah, no, that's fair. And that was a problem that I had with it because it kept going over, because there was nothing in place to stop it. Mm -hmm. So where are we at with that and how did that happen? Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, without getting into the, the, the super details of it, um, there were some disagreements that we had had, I think, in some part with the village board about some things that should have been funded and maybe some, some things that shouldn't have been funded. Would that have made up the $69,000 difference? I don't think so. I believe that the decision, um, no, so my, our board, I should say my board, our board um, does not have uh, budgeting power. Right? We are an advisory board to uh, the village board. Um, uh, I believe that we were under the impression that there were, um, due to the budget from last year, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we had opportunities um, to go over budget um, in that particular year uh, as a net result of that. Um, I am for sticking to the hundred thousand. That's just my my sort of belief structure um, in that. However, I think in all budgets, when opportunities present themselves that are unique, that they should be considered, and as long as the budget conditions afford for that opportunity, I think those should be taken because the sooner we invest, the better off we are. Um, yeah, well, uh, I don't want to cut you off. No, no. I'll, I'll take full responsibility. That's what I, I mean. I, I take one hundred and ten percent responsibility for going over. I'm the one that thought it was a good idea because we had a lot of businesses taking advantage of it. Downtown was messed up. There were a lot of businesses that were hurting. It was a good opportunity to reinvest because then they could be ready when everything opened up. And so Jay and, and the BDC had talked about the different projects that came and we looked at the numbers and I, I, I don't want to say I could have put a stop to it, but I could have, I could have opposed it and said, we have $100,000 brought to the board. But realistically, it was one of those points in time where you make that call and so I take responsibility for it because ordinarily I say you stick to your budget and that's it unless there's an emergency. That was an emergency situation. However, it was a situation like we haven't had before. And you had businesses that were willing to invest into their into their properties, even if they weren't generating the revenue to do so. I mean, they were just they were all taking a breath and they're like, well, can't have anybody in here. I might as well fix up the place. And so how, how could we turn that down as a village, considering what we roughly have? So I, I respect what you're saying and I agree with you, but I, like I said, I, I'll i jump on the sword for that one. Actually. And I, I would also, if I could just interrupt you, Ryan, I'd like to remind the board that this board quoted three times to exceed the amount the BDC recommended. So this board is responsible for the leverage. Yeah, and I don't mean to I'm just well, so. If I could ask them too, is um, we came to a point where we voted not to fund any other further programs. I think six months into the year, and we'd already gone 169,000. He had asked or put in a request for the BDC and the you know the committee then to start looking as to how to better structure the funding so it wasn't just an open checkbook. Yeah. Whereas people could come in and have a hundred thousand dollar project, and there goes all the money to one person. So to restructure the way it was, to redo the applications, so that it was more of a limited amount that the village would assist, but we could assist more businesses. So what has the BBC done with that in this particular? Area? Yeah, that's a brilliant question. Um, but I, I'm going to actually talk about how we structured the program originally because I think it's important. It's pertinent to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, when we had first started with the facade program, uh, we had looked around to other towns that uh, had facade programs of the like. And in having conversations with them, it, uh, it was apparent that the restrictions oftentimes that were put on place 
were a pretty significant disincentive for projects that had real impact. And so the conversation that we had around at our board was, what we'd really like to do is, it would almost be our preference to have fewer big projects that take longer over time than a you know cascade of smaller projects. Um, we had felt that the amount of uh, time that had gone by um, um, through disinvestment um, by, and let's be honest, it was business owners as much as it was not holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. um, there were economic reasons that sort of had some impact on that. But we had structured it in such a way that we wanted to do it a little bit different in order to get it moving quicker, um, which I think has proven out to be uh, salient, right? And in, in the end, it, it proved to work very well. Um, I'm certainly uh, a rule follower. Right, it's how I'm built, it's how I'm, I'm made, and um, certainly I think the you know, uh, village administrator uh, uh, Hedges had alluded to there were certain disagreements that we may have, we have had. I would have preferred to maybe fund some of the projects a little bit less because I didn't think they conformed to the actual letter of what the, uh, the program is. Um, but in answer to the question, I, I prefer the, the, the few big projects um, to the uh, much smaller ones, and I only believe feel that way is because I felt like the amount of distance, you know, the amount of time that the dis, disinvestment in those buildings uh, had happened, that the amount of, as a business owner myself, as a real estate, um, someone who owns a real estate business, you know, there's so much money that is required on the front end of a project in order to do it properly. Now, anybody can put lipstick on a pig, right? I mean, that is, you know, that's an easy thing to do, a little coat of paint here or whatever. And if we made the program so small, that's all we would have gotten. But instead, we got the Bass and Hound Rescue. Right. Instead, we got, you know, the improvements that were made at the cave. We got the Cap Barrel, which is, you know, in many ways, the crown jewel, right, uh, <laughs> of the downtown. Um, I think uh, a lot of the projects that we did, and, and without those choices, um, those significant impacts, would, and I guess they would be here all night, but that's why. So, and I guess I'm done. <laughs> so have any changes been made to it then? Um, so in terms of the specifics of the project, of the, of the, of the, um, of the letter of the stock program, it has not been, but we do have a meeting with Bill Swallow and Aaron Kelly that we're planning on getting together to um, to add some more definition so that we don't have some of the ambiguity in the request, if that makes sense. So at this point, uh, there is no cap on any single project. There is only a percentage uh, cap. Um, and uh, unless you guys tell us different, we have no intention of making a change. And Trustee Bowles, Street staff has been made very clear. It's been made very clear to staff that we will not overspend the budget, whatever that turns out to be. Okay. Yeah. So we'll probably say just make it 200 grand and we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> they have a question? Trustee Kelly, you're online. Did you have any questions too? He sits on the committee. No. Shouldn't have any questions. <laughs> no, I do not have any questions. <laughs> Does anybody else? No, Trustee. Uh, is also oh, she's okay. Trustee Fogger, no questions. Thank you. It's like the great powerful house. Yes, it is. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Projecki. Thank you guys for letting me speak. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Just Our thank last you. Uh, speaker signed up is Bill Swalwell. Bill, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Now we can. What do you know? It works. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh Ray. <laughs> Modern <laughs> technology. Well, thank you for an opportunity to speak. I'd like to thank the budget committee and the village of Hampshire, uh, the village board. Um, can you folks hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I'm cutting in and out at this end. Am I doing the same at your end? No, <laughs> it sounds like you're in the room with us. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay, um, I wanted to, I, I don't think my, my presentation is as eloquent as uh, Mr. Krajewski, but I had a few points, uh, a few observations um, from, I guess you'd call it a historical perspective. Go figure, let me talk about history. Um, the, uh, some of the things that I've noticed uh, in the past that I believe are what I call tangible and measurable successes, that the village board and numerous committees have accomplished. It's only six of them, I guess. I know there's more than that, but I've only jotted down six. I wanted to remind the board, and I, I think these are all kind of interrelated, but um, one is the implementation of that hotel tax back in 2000, 2001, in order to foster and promote uh, tourism and the marketing of the village. Um, that was the foresight of a 
Prior Village Board, and I, I commend them uh, for implementing that. Um, next, I wanted to mention, uh, and this is in large part thanks to Ryan Krajewski and the Village Board at that time, the establishment and creation of both the Business Development Commission and the Beautification Committee. Uh, one of the other uh, benchmarks uh, is the Village's uh, continued support and partnership with Hampshire's Chamber of Commerce. And what's that, what that has done uh, to promote Hampshire and foster new businesses and area commerce. Next item I'd like to mention is, of course, uh, something very close to my heart, the Facade Improvement Program. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the Beautification Committee and the Business Development Commission, who I present to after uh, the Beautification Committee is done. I believe that the implementation of that program has served as what I, I perceive as the catalyst uh, for investment by new business owners and reinvestment by existing property owners in the town. Um, it's tangible, it's measurable, and when you walk down State Street or drive down State Street, you can't help but see it. Next item I'd like to comment on is the Village Hall itself. The last year, what have I seen? I wasn't involved in it, but I, I do observe. The masonry repairs to the side being covered with siding, painting of the front. I drive, no, I walk by on a Sunday, and who's out front with a roller painting the front of the village hall is our own village manager, Jay Hedges. <laughs> actions, and other actions speak <laughs> words. Um, President Reed's uh, desire to restore the signage on the front of the village hall. Last I recall, I don't think there was anything up. The letters have been placed back on the front of the hall. There's a vertical sign that also identifies the hall. Uh, again, President Reed's suggestion and idea to restore the gas lights on the front of the hall. Um, they look wonderful. It's these little things, noticeable, tangible things that people do. I think they get noticed and make uh, and create the charm that I, I, I think Hampshire has. It, that luster has been gone, but it, it's coming back. Uh, not to mention the second floor window replacements on the village hall. Take a look around the boardroom. The paint on the walls, the new top, the new logo. And I think there was new carpeting, um, LED lighting. Um, this is all moving the right direction, both inside and outside the village hall. Um, the last thing I'd like to comment on is uh, what I call the coup de gras. It's the Coon Creek's fireworks show. It is the village's downtown festival block. Kudos to the village board who was instrumental in working towards that grant and applying those funds. Look at what you have accomplished. Uh, it's now we have a gathering place we never once had. Um, I believe what has been accomplished just in the last year and a half has and will have a positive effect on the village. Uh, I recently heard that the farmer's market might be relocating their uh, monthly uh, market to relocate adjacent to the festival block, which I think is fantastic. Um, other than that, um, I what I've seen, again, I'm going to talk about tangible and measurable successes. Uh, the downtown business district, the downtown environment has come a long way in improvement. Uh, it still has further to go. And all I have to do is uh, provide the encouragement, uh, keep up the momentum. Uh, in closing, I encourage the village, uh, the budget committee and the village board to consider its continued further support of the facade grant program in the 23-24 budget year. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Schwala. Does anybody have any questions for him? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on for the members of the um, budget committee are able to vote on the minutes, et cetera. So not being rude to the other members of the, of the village board. Um, we're going to move on to approval of the minutes uh, beginning with March 10th of 2022. Um, these minutes kind of got lost and buried and they went on an agenda once and so we couldn't approve them and then they kind of got pushed back and came to our thank you all for attention thank you all for coming thank you. Thank you. it came to our attention then that we needed to uh 
So has the members had a chance to take a look at them? Can I entertain a motion to approve the March 10th, 2022 minutes? What do you do on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Pope, would you make that motion? Sure, as soon as I see them, I don't have them. I've got March 7th, 2023. They were sent out in the twice oh. the in They're the in the, they're the pack. I got it. I got a lot of packets. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Like a moment or so to take a look. Uh, yeah, um, there's no page numbers, but there is a correction. Counting the first page, one, two, three, fourth page, hotel, motel, tax fund. Uh, second paragraph, it said, I believe we should fund the full 19,000. I did not say that. That is absolutely incorrect. Where was that on the page that begins with Ms. Lyons explained? Is that the page we're on? Starts with sewer construction fund. Yeah. Go down the page to hotel, motel, tax fund. Fourth page, including the front. And we'll go uh, very squat. Mm -hmm. second, second page of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Hotel, motel, tax fund. Sewer construction oh. fund is at the top. That is incorrect. I said we needed to look at that because the tax that we gave them was 10,000 and we gave them uh, 19 the, the year after COVID uh, because they didn't have it the, the year before and they still had bills to pay. All right, so you want them to remove that trustee code that he believes we should fund the full 19,000 for Cook Creek days? Yes. Which Ms. Lyons said would would be fine with doesn't matter right. it's an incorrect I'll statement and i wish to have it removed okay and the chairperson policy is for that as well i could probably make chairperson follow screening ask if we could reconsider additional contributions other than that i i, I will make the motion to approve the minutes with that correction mm -hmm. I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Um, next, we have the minutes from the March 7, 2023, uh, from earlier this month. Those were sent out yesterday. I'd like to entertain a motion then to approve that. Okay. Okay. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? At this time, I'd like to um, get verbal consent or request verbal consent to amend the agenda. Is it even necessary at this point? One. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, verbal consent then to amend the agenda to change, to switch the order of 5E and 5F so the large group gathering staffing fee could be discussed further up and then the motor vehicle fee last. For the request of staff. What do you need from us? Sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that I sent yes. Yeah. Mr. Coase? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, then moving on for our funding discussions is next on the agenda. Um, and I know, you know, our group has left since then, but I, I want to before we get into each of these is to basically say, I think all of us agree that every one of the programs that we help to provide and to fund for this village right. is well worth it. Um, evidenced by the people that came today to talk about what those funds have meant both to their committees, to their groups, as well as to the entire village is, is amazing. 
And so I don't think anybody here is going to question, you know, the fact that it's a wonderful expenditure made on behalf of the village. Um, the reason we did bring everybody here today to kind of to talk and to explain what it is that they use the money for, if it's still necessary. Some had not put in a request for it. Um, some regularly do, the other ones don't. Um, so we wanted to be able to put something out there to say, why don't you come in and tell us a little bit about what you do and why you do it and, and, and if the money was still necessary for you to continue doing the work that you do. Um, also at the previous meeting on March 7th, there was a lot of question, question yeah, question as to how much was was spent, um, where the funds are going, how long we've been doing it. And so because of that, we also wanted to bring people in to be able to answer some of those questions, which we did have tonight. So but they left. I, I, they did, they already did. I specifically told Carl that we would ask questions during the Yeah. <laughs> Let me go over that. I'm, that would be fine if he's still out. They're still on the parking lot. I don't know. You can be out there. I mean, I, I think the I think the Hampshire Area Chamber of Commerce. I mean, it's up to you guys, but it, it, they um, they all got up and walked out, so you can't engage with them because they walked out. Well, and I'm sure they believed it was public comment for over, and they would not be. But Mr. Cole. Prior years, the the the, mm -hmm. the village had really nothing to do with the chamber. No, not with under Cassandra at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so after Jeannie got on there, uh, it was this village, a few of the village board that actually voted to start uh, funneling money to them so that they could start doing it properly, which they've done. So I, I'm 100% on board with that. The, the problem that I that I see is, is and this isn't, this kind of one merges into the other where you talk about the large group staff gathering fee. Um, the number for the farmer's market isn't on this piece of paper that we talked about. Oh. They had talked about, so they're moving the farmer's market mm -hmm. downtown. That is a, that is happening. Right, that's well, it's been requested. It's on that form. Okay. In okay. fact, they're waiting to find out if there's going to be a fee. If there is a fee, they probably won't move. So, just, just a point of clarification on that, Mr. Hedges. Communication has already gone out to past vendors that it has been moved and it will be on Washington. Uh, and I know it's because I have received that communication from the chamber. Right, uh, and in response to that, I let uh, uh, Jeannie know that that the village board was had asked for information about about the cost for public works and police to staff those events, and that that might that the, there may be fees charged back. So I let her know that, and she explained to me, and I believe she said to the board tonight that that that's. Well, no, no, she didn't say it tonight, but she has explained to me, and that she would tell the board if she were still here. She was going to. She, she okay. did. She will be back in a minute. I believe. She'll be back in a minute. She's going to turn it over. There is. She sent me an email today saying that uh, you know if we're putting that on hold, if there's a fee, we may not be able to do it. We may not be able to move it. Did she say why she's moving from the parking lot over there to here? No. But uh, Trustee Klein may know she's on the chamber. I'm not a trustee anymore, but. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I believe Jeannie's on. Just here she comes. The building. So, there she is. <laughs> You need some questions about that. Sure. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, we've, we've kind of moved out of order, but you're here. So, yes, um, Kelly just asked a question. No, that's okay. That's fine. Um, we just skipped over Coon Creek. That's why I thought. Well, maybe Carol will come back. And that's okay then. So, the question was is, is had you talked about, and I believe you did, about the fee? Uh, potential of the large group gathering staffing fee and what that would do to the village, to the chamber. Yeah, do you want me to come yes. here? Um, yeah, so just as a small example, the outdoor markets, um, which we were thinking about coming down, we were going to have our hazmat meeting with all these uh, fine gentlemen to see if that was going to be a feasible thing. But with the fees uh, kind of uh, laying out the way that uh, Mr. Hedges had said that it would go with um, a couple of streets people and police and all that kind of stuff. Um, over the course of the year, these community events don't bring a whole lot of money. Like the whole the amount we bring in for the outdoor market uh, is about 2500 The amount of fees that it looks like would be assessed to us would be about 3000 So there's no point in having uh, an event like that. Even the street dance, everything that we do for the um, 
for the community is they come in for free. We don't charge a gate fee. It's to get them down here so that they can then get into the businesses and, and shop and spend and have a good time and, and all that kind of stuff. We don't make a huge amount of money off of it. Um, but again, it, it's for the benefit of our businesses. Our businesses sponsor the whole thing. Um, that's really what keeps the chamber going is those sponsorship fees and that type of thing. So to pay additional fees on top of that, um, it, it's just like, you know, we have, we have to then make that up to our businesses and ask them for more sponsorship. Does that answer your kind of your question? Is there a reason why you move out of the perfect parking lot down there? Well, last there? year, um, I granted 72 was like East Bay route. We weren't getting a lot of, um, you know, we weren't getting a lot of business down there. We were trying to find a way to um, just enliven it, bring bring some of the action down here, uh, use some of the festival area. I, mean, I didn't want to hit about 72 because that is kind of a, you know, major inconvenience for the whole scenario. But Washington Street would be better. We have several businesses down there that would benefit from it. And then people could come across. Yeah. <laughs> people could come across to the restaurants then as well and, you know, dine and, as they shop. And um, just thought it would be a really nice uh, community type thing. Um, if it's a lot of trouble, like I said, we didn't have our meeting with the command people yet to see, you know, is that going to be worth it? Is it going to be a lot of trouble? We can always do them back on the parking lot. Um, so communication's already gone out to vendors and communication to vendors is uh, basically was a call for vendors. But you advertised that you've moved the space. I I mentioned it, but I've also reached out to them and said, you know, we are. I don't, in I don't want to get abrasive. I really. No, no, no. I don't. But I, don't I saw that. it all over Facebook. Well, I did put the application out there and I had it on there, and then I pulled it because I realized, yeah, you know. Um, so, so, so what so, I'm saying is, the decision was already made before you came into the village. Is that true or false? It, it was my goal, but I didn't think it was going to be an issue. Okay. I didn't know. So right now it's still up up on seventy two. Yeah, then I haven't I haven't made the decision. I put everything on hold. I let everybody know that it's in the, that that I didn't have my approval. So I, I guess so. So the reason why I bring it up is is Jay and I had a conversation briefly about it. Was it cost three thousand or was it the, yeah, it's the board now? Okay, I'm sorry, I can't see it. I still can't see it. You can put it, you have to blow it up so that I'm I'm blind. So just tell me what it is. It's three thousand. It's it's three thousand dollars. So it's I, basically just public work to put up the uh, barricades, but we have to have them here in the morning and then at the end of the event. So they have to be here for six hours. So I get the the question morphs into we have in the budget to give money to you guys on top of. So the question is is does this uh, village board want to fund? It's not a six thousand dollar request, then it's a nine thousand dollar. That's realistically what it comes to. You're looking at me, so I would. No, I want to make sure that I have my fund. I would would like to respond, um, Mr. Mayor, because you asked a question about all events. Sure. uh, And and that's what we provided here. Um, We didn't really discuss that this was going to be a whether this was going to be an action of the board. We didn't discuss whether this would be applied to all the all the organizations. We really have not had a conversation. I was just asked to provide this information. Okay. So that's all I was able to tell right. me is I was asked to provide the information. I don't have any idea what this board plans to do with that. So I okay so I or a recommendation. No, I'm making I'm just making sure I have my numbers correct. That's why that's why I'm looking at you. It's not for any other reason. Would any of these events would we be able to use any of the hotel motel tax on uh to, to fund public works for any of these? Like staff time and all that. It has to be specifically for overnight stays, but some relationship to overnight stays. The farm and market won't have any relationship there? Well, Jeannie does a really good job of advertising everything and putting putting that in there mm-hmm. at grant or in her application or request for funding, but uh, it, it would be a stretch to start paying our. our and, and first of all, there's no more money available there than there is in this fund, so it doesn't really matter where you pull the fund. No, no, I, I guess it's realistically is what it comes down to. And and so I mean, I'm a big proponent of having everybody downtown. I, I mean, this, the problem then becomes, and this isn't reflective of the chamber because I feel like we have a good relationship, but I feel like some organizations in this community come to us and say, okay, we need more. We need more. And there's already a cost of doing business. And I've always been okay with the cost of doing business. It's not what, it's just that, it's just that as we look at trying to figure out ways to make all the numbers work, I mean, I think that uh, 
going to call you out, but I think that you brought up a couple of times with all the money that we spend with parades and stamping and all that other stuff. It's a, it's, so if I mean, it's this board's decision that we'll, we'll go for, I, I, I am fully supportive, but the data is there to show that we sponsor a lot more than just Boone Creek, the chamber, and, you know, yeah, the Coon Creek and Chamber, as far as events go, because anytime that there's anything downtown, we have to staff it. Anytime there's anything like the Park District run. But in what Mr. Hedges submitted, there's eight events. Those are the big ones. Those are eight events that go on from. Five. Well, because you've got Farmer's Market's five. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm counting what the sheet he gave me, uh, sure. Mr. Chairman. Okay. There's, there's nine on there minus Coon Creek's eight. Am I, am I wrong? Somebody? Uh, there was a correction that Laura added the four additional uh, chamber events downtown. There was okay. A so I'm, I'm looking at eight on my sheet. So that, that goes on all year long. And we pay $19,000 uh, so far for setup and traffic and all that junk. Goon Creek, we give them $19,000 for four days. And this goes on for months and months. So this is a more viable. Uh, advertising for Hampshire and downtown and the restaurants and the businesses and all the, the shops like Christine's shop, uh, then for four days of going up there and getting blasted out of your mind. So I, I think the board should look at that seriously. 19,000 for four days versus 19,000 for eight events from March to October. So I, I, I I think one thing that was brought up at the last meeting where we talked about the general fund was exactly the in-kind donations or the in-kind motions that are also going to these organizations that are asking for fiscal donations. So for example, the chamber or Coon Creek or those. And I, to President Reed's comment, I wonder if the discussion is if Coon Creek comes in with 19,000 that they're asking for, do we deduct 10,700 from that and say, well, that 10,700 is covered on in kind because we're going to have police and streets and we're going to help you with all of that stuff that costs money. And then we'll give you the 8,300 beyond that. And would that same conversation then happen with others? Because while there are a lot of events on here, not all of these are chamber events. Like some of these are park district events that we, we partner with and do things on. But I, I wonder though, as a board, do we look at this and say, an organization asks for X amount of dollars as a total, then some of that is cash and some of that covers the cost of providing services like police streets and uh, so. and other areas. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hedges, the large group gathering staffing fee, using the word fee, um, is that something that because I know we asked for the amount, so are we looking then in the budget to start a fee? It was not my suggestion that no. only what President Reed had no. put okay. together. So, so the, the question is more, Aaron did a better job framing it than I did. And I'm, I'm trustee Kelly did. And the fact is, is that um, I, I, I just, I'm all about supporting community events. I was a big proponent of moving things downtown, like with the Trump retreat and different the chamber events and stuff. It's huge, it's huge. It brings people into the village, it brings people into the businesses. I mean, I mean, I ruffled a whole bunch of feathers years ago when we started the farmer's market. There was a group of moms that got together at the park district and they had this open air market and they outgrew the space. And so they came to the village and they said, where can we have this thing? And former trustees got really bad because they thought I was overstepping. And we ended up the first farmer's market that was held we held in the Red Ox parking lot because Jimmy let us do it. And I had to buy signs out of my pockets and so that so that Prairie View Farmers Market and uh, Goberts could get advertised there because they were mad that we had the audacity to start a farmer's market. So, I mean, it's, it's very, it's like a personal thing for me that this continues. I, I mean, I fully support it. The question becomes, it's, I, I guess I guess it's more targeted toward the four day festival. I'm a huge supporter of Greek. I have been for years. You can see that we've been giving for years and years and years, but we donate a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of money to Greek. And every year it's more and more and more and more. And so and, and I'm not saying that it's not deserving. It's not that it's, it's a big chunk of money. It's big. It's a lot of resources for staff. It's a lot of resources for the police department. 
And so I, I just, we're a sponsor, we're a sponsor, okay? Like none of the other sponsors are, 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 are providing services. We're providing services on top of it. We've even negotiated into our garbage contract that for community events that they provide outhouses and trash service and all that kind of stuff. We negotiated on that because we have these community events that we like to give back, but there's a cost of that as well. All the residents ultimately are paying for the trash service for these community events too because we've negotiated it into our contract. And while it's not a separate line item, it's divided amongst all the residents. So I just, I again, we don't have to do anything with it. But it's all out there. It's now part of the record. We've had the discussion. If the board, if the, if the board chooses that we just continue the way things are, I'm completely okay with it. But the notion that I've heard several comments from some organizations that if the village doesn't step up, then they're going to have to go a different direction, or they're going to have to stop doing things or whatever. And that conversation doesn't set well with me personally, because I feel for the last at least 10 years, and Toby, eight, and Eric, what, seven and a half? Six. Six. I mean, all we've done is we try to, up. I was, all we've been doing is stepping up. And I really have a hard time with that argument. And so look at the checks we've cut for Coon Creek in the last five years. It's gone from, what did he say, 10 grand? 29. An hour, 20, but look, just look at the last 29 five checks. Yeah. If somebody took the time and went through the minutes, I think that I am convinced up on the screen and now. it's and, and it's in the minutes for years we gave 10,000 and then COVID hit and then they didn't have it and then Carl came to the next meeting the following year and said we didn't have the the event but the bill still came in so we doubled it and it stayed that double from that point on it's in the minutes uh, I think 8, is that it up on the screen yeah I can't yes. see that 2018 20, I couldn't see that the binoculars no, I know, but somebody can read it to him. That's as big as I can make that. I know, I'm just saying. Can you go through, you go through the last couple of years? Right President Reed said that because of a very healthy year that the right. village decided to give more. So can, can, right. be can Ms. Lyons speak? She has the figures of the actual yes. checks over time. Um, do you want me to work from last year backwards or do you want me to? Start in 2017, please. 2017. Okay, let me just, I'll highlight below it. So in 2017, we gave $8,000 to Coon Creek. However, we also paid $2,003 for advertising for that. For the radio station. Yes. You said $2,003, so $10,000. Yes, yep. And then in 2018, it was the same thing. Um, so in 2018, I'm seeing a check for $20,000. Well, so I'm talking fiscal years. So, yeah. So, um, May of 18 would have been fiscal 19. Yeah. Okay. So we yeah. gave for 18 and 19 on the same check? No, they're, they're separate. If, if you could just let Lori read them all. Oh, okay. But so, where did you want me to start? I'm sorry. So fiscal, fiscal year 18. Yeah, fiscal year 2018. Okay. So, 20, fiscal year 18. Would have been uh, July of 2017. Okay. Fiscal year 18. There you go. We gave $8,000 plus $2,003 was paid to count. So okay. Next one. Yeah. Uh, so 18, it was 18. It was also, oh, sorry, in 2018, or yeah, for fiscal year 18. It was $8,000 and again, 2018. Okay, 10000 Okay, next one. In 2019, it was $20,000 plus 2198 dollars for Town Square Media. Okay, 22K. That okay. was for 20. Fiscal year 19. Fiscal, fiscal 19. So okay. fiscal, for fiscal 20. Uh, in fiscal 20, it was $16,000. Plus two thousand and sixteen dollars. So eighteen thousand. For yes. Okay, so fiscal twenty one. In fiscal twenty one, we did not pay anything because of the because of COVID. Yes. And then the following year. Twenty twenty two, it was twenty nine thousand. There you go. Wow. Plus that was the twenty grand we did the couple years before that. 
and an additional 10 and for the year. Fiscal, and then fiscal 23 was what? 19,000. Now, can you go back a little bit further just to, so fiscal year 16 was it was, so ten, ten. was ten ten thousand dollars almost every year prior to that. Thank you. That, okay. That's what I was yeah, getting at. Going from, all the way back to from two thousand and eight. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So from 09 to seventeen or 09 to eighteen, it was uh ten thousand. Can I ask a quick question to Ms. Mayor since she's in the room? I know we're talking about concrete here, but. Yes, sir. Um, when we were just looking at the fees that it costs the village to support, to provide the support staff for the events that you have, and I know that you've requested funds uh, as, as in the past to help support the chamber. Would it, rather than charging or potentially getting that like $3,000 charge for the farmer market or the other events that are on there, would you be open to having that being considered as part of the overall uh, funding towards the chamber and then not getting the bill for that, but just maybe having less cash because some of it is being counted as in kind? I think that I would have to go back to the board and see if they wanted to move those events to a location where it wouldn't cost us anything. So the answer is no. To, well, no, but just to ask, no, you know, no, to I, ask them, you know, I, I think to be, I'm being responsible. Well, there, there are other events there too, right? There's Holiday on State, there's Ice Sculpture, Cocoa Crawl, there's the Street Dance. So the, yeah. the Farmer's Market is one of them, but there are multiple, where there is a fee for staff. Yeah, the, um, we could probably do the Street Dance in another location as well if we needed to. No, no. But uh, that's not that, that, that's I'm respectfully that wasn't the question. Is how, the, the question the question was is would you or the board? I, I know you're we're asking right. you to look into the crystal right. ball. Right. Would you? I mean, if we were to say okay, we're providing. Would you be open to the in kind conversation as opposed to the cash? So, but what I'm we're, we're open to the conversation. I am absolutely open to working with you guys any way we can. But I do answer to a board. I understand that. So. You know, I can't just say, uh, yeah, we're going to do it this way. You know, I, I would want to include them in the conversation. Okay, so we you. gave you $3,000 and then consider the additional 3000 as an in-kind to cover the services of the village. That would, and I know you have to take it back to a bar, be a hardship for you or that would jeopardize other things that the chamber does for the year. No, I don't. I I would I would just like to know what you would like to do, and then I would present it to them. I can't say that that what you've just indicated mm -hmm. would be a hardship. No, um, right. You had said when you spoke that that the six thousand dollars is a vital part of the chamber's mm -hmm. budget, mm -hmm. and that the dues make up fifty percent of the budget. Roughly, yes. And the rest are what the village gives and the events, the money that you get in from the events. Mm -hmm. And then I'm assuming is vendors fees and things mm -hmm. like that that come in. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So if we took took away that three thousand dollars and and that cost the chamber to have to reduce events that it did. No, um, we would probably we would have to make up for that. So you charge our local businesses. Well, to make up for that. We, we would have to have a, another event. We'd have to put something else together to, to make up that gap. Okay. okay. Mr. Kelly, did you have any more other questions about that to Ms. Meyer? No, I'm all good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, if, do we have any more questions then for the chamber at this point? I don't, I don't believe so. Anybody? Okay. All right, we think you're done, but you might want to just. Leave. Oh, definitely. Yes. <laughs> I'll let go ahead. Everybody took off so fast we weren't able to grab people. And I don't, I don't want anybody to think that they're in the crosshairs here. We're just trying to figure out how to make all the things work. Right. You know, I mean, this is going to keep growing. We're going to keep growing, and there's going to be more events, and we have to figure out if we're going to pay. That's all. I mean, it's just a matter of how we're going to make all everything work. There's everybody's got a lot of needs, including the village, and it's just it's a hard conversation to have. And that doesn't mean that any of us don't support it. It's just that we have to have this conversation. And, and because the two of you were not in the room at the time, um, the the conversation or my what I explained is that all of us support all of the events and all the what the committees do here. 
um, you together with the other members of your groups make this a better village, um, more exciting village, an enjoyable village, et cetera. And we're all supportive of that. Um, but there are a lot of uh, changes that are coming to the village. Um, we're expanding a lot. We are, as those expansions take place, we have to add additional trucks for different routes. Um, Snow plow right now we have five routes to, to clear everything. If we add two or three more subdivisions, that's additional time, effort, staff, and, and vehicle equipment. Um, there's things that the village has to be able to provide for that if we don't have the money for it, a lot of the things on the list that we have had as serious things that we need have been put off. And additional things that come up at our emergency level Everything that we had had planned sometimes has to be put aside to be able to do it. So as a result of that, in a, at the meeting, the last meeting that we had for this budget committee, as we started talking about all of the different events, whether or not each of the organizations still needed the money, and if the money that we had given was enough. So for the chamber, it had said, well, we gave them the money to get them started when they were you know, floundering a little bit, and it was a boost to get them started. Do they still need the money? And so that's kind of where it went. Um, Mouse came for the Pool Creek as to do they still need to do it? Uh, do they still need as much money as they do? How much is going to it? What are the bills? So therefore, we wanted Pool Creek to come in. Additionally, because we do need um, some major projects or some major funding, you know, to build um, something for the streets garage. It's going to be a significant budget outlay. And so the thought is, is if we are going to do it, maybe we need to cut in other areas. So not just the village, um, but some of the organizations. Um, the other option then is, is to add it to the taxes to the, actually, it was going to be a fee uh, that's being proposed to pay for that. So the thought is, if we can cut in certain areas, let's see where we can cut. And that's why we wanted people to come in and to kind of plead their case. So um, that's just to give a little background knowledge. So I don't want anybody to think that we're looking to cancel or to not support these community events and community organizations. It's just a matter of having a healthy conversation to decide where we're going to focus the money. And the same thing goes then with the beautification committee or the, um, facade. the facade improvement grant, which is $100,000. So if that, I mean, $100,000, we're looking at something for $1.5 million. That's, you know. Keep in, keep in mind, some of these projects uh, will need to be funded for over 20 years. So any cuts you made in the, you can make in the budget now, kudos. But keep in mind, those budget cuts will have to be made for 20 plus years. As we continue to grow, we're having budget cuts. And that that budget cut is only going to deepen as we grow for 20, over 20 years. Um, same thing with mandated state mandates for bills that gets passed by the legislature. We have one bill that's going to be 153,000. That was not expected at all, but it's a mandate that we review and look what is it, measure something, and it's going to cost us 153,000 to measure. Um, and, and so those are things that we weren't necessarily anticipating. Um, additional things for the police department that are mandated through the Safety Act and through other acts that get passed. So there's a, a lot of bills. And so this committee is looking then at the possibilities of shaving things off in certain areas. So that's a little bit behind the reason why you were asked to kind of come in. It's, you know, I know I was getting phone calls from people. Are you cutting us and you're taking the money away? No, we want to have a conversation about it. And so that's what it was. It just got back to other people that we were cutting the money completely. And that was not true. Um, so that's a little bit of the background uh, for it. Um, uh, Mr. Palmasano, when you were gone, we, we spoke about the area of Chamber of Commerce, but there was also discussions <coughs> on concrete country days. Um, and if I can ask Ms. Lyons to put that back up. Um, these were the amounts given to Coon Creek over the last... 10 years if you want to stand up and kind of take a look at that um you got to really yeah. you got to really i see it no, i see it. um so the conversation was basically saying that the coon creek was only getting approximately eight thousand dollars up through i think we said fiscal year 2020 um 
And there was an $8,000 plus a uh, media fee or media. Yeah, so, so what we ended up doing was, is we ended up splitting the $10,000 a little bit. And then that's when we were trying to focus our efforts on promoting Hampshire and the chamber. Right. And so there was a certain amount of the $10,000 that we coordinated with a local media company. And then we did radio and online ads and stuff like that. Try to get people from outside the area to come visit Hampshire in the past. And then it was told to the village at a certain point that the media attention wasn't worth it or wasn't, wasn't mm -hmm. but there wasn't a value to it. And so they had just requested the money directly. So that was that moved it up to ten thousand uh, dollars up until it moved to you said we said sixteen thousand. Yeah, so orig orig originally and then it went up to twenty two. It's like so the total amounts to Coon Creek, whether it be a media combination or just not or, or, or we're just a Coon Creek. So in fiscal year 17, it was 10. Fiscal year 18 was 10. Fiscal year 19 was 22. Fiscal year 20 was 18. Fiscal year 21 was nothing because of COVID. Fiscal year 22 was 29. And fiscal year 23 was 19. And then this year, fiscal year 24 is requested that they ask, or they are asking for 19 again. So that went going through, It's that's Mr. Coates. Uh, comments about it jumping from 10,000 up to almost 20,000 right. for the fees. So um, it, at this point, I'm just going to jump out then is with the amount of money that you're getting, if you did not get it or got half, where does that leave Coon Creek? We'll be fine. I mean, I'll, don't get me wrong. I mean, I went with a high number, okay, because I have that umbrella over my head of bad weather. What we have right now is basically our insurance umbrella in the account should we lose a day. If we lose a Saturday night, a Saturday all day, we'll lose $25,000 in our feet. That's fine. We can roll the dice at that point. I thought I'd go high. I'm willing to take, not me, we are willing to take whatever the board can afford to give us. I mean, we appreciate everything that you're doing as, to start with. So that's why I put, I put the same number as I did last year. So, so the conversation, uh, Trustee Kelly, you may have to help me with this because you've explained it a little bit better than me. Um, the total cost, or like our cost, uh, with Coon Creek in general, according to the figures that we have um, for supporting the event, is about ten thousand seven hundred dollars. That's like you you uh, missed average, that part. You average it out. Okay, I get that. But the, and that's not including the. Outhouses. That's not including the trash service. It's not that, that, but that's including our total like cost revenue wise of doing business for the event. And so that's why the, the conversation always was that we're having at the board level is okay. So you know, in every year that you've gotten money, you've essentially so even at the ten thousand dollar level, you've gotten money because of the amount of man hours and that kind of stuff. And so I don't know who freaks aware of that. I don't know. Well, what, wait, are you counting that as a, a donation? It would be, that's what's classified as an in-kind donation. See, I, I disagree. I don't think it's an in-kind donation. I think that's a necessity for well, the safety of the residents. Theoretically, if the village couldn't support it or said, no, we're not going to support it, then you couldn't have it. But again, on the other end, you also have those same in-kind donations for all the other public events. And, that, and that's why we're here. I know. That's, that's, right. I mean, that, that's why we're discussing this right. as a group with okay. the chamber and everything else. We're not targeting Coop Creek. We're not I understand. We're not targeting I understand. The chamber. I'm just giving you my... I'm yeah. just giving you that. I, I, so if you look up on the screen here. We've just added this. These are for the events that we've done and the working hours that go into each one of them and what the total cost is to the village. So that's where the village was talking about if we needed to do some kind of a group gathering staffing fee to cover it. When it comes down to then Coon Creek on line 13, it came to a total then of $10,700 for the four days of the fest. So one of the trustees suggested, well, if we've got 10,700 of that for, for a four day event, and we've got all these others to cover eight events, why are we giving 10 making why don't okay. we just make that a donation Mr. Pope, would you repeat that because i'm not saying it properly the way you did <laughs> i said we're giving coon creek 19 grand okay. and the, on the sheet on the sheet that we were given for all of the other eight events in the village for the year we spent nine grand so the, the, the bottom line to all this, if you cut any of these events out, 
all the rest of the events are going to suffer. If you cut Coon Creek too much, they're going to have to get crappier bands. They're going to have to do other things. And it's going to cheapen the uh, uh, fest to the point where people stop coming. And then all this is going to go away. That's the problem. So you can shape, you can shape dollars here and there in your budget. But this stuff's going to suffer because of it. All of it. The bottom line is, just for the two of you that are here, the chamber and, and, and Cooper, as we're staring down the barrel trying to figure out how to pay for a public works building, and it's going to, and on the agenda, we're going to be talking about later on about a motor vehicle fee. It's going to be another charge on somebody's water bill to help pay for capital projects that the village can't fund. And so, and so what ultimately ends up going to happen, what's going to happen is when this hits, let's say that this passes, let's say that the, that we implement a fee that goes on everybody's water bill, it then becomes, well, what else is the village spending money on? Where's our tax money going? Why are we giving so much money to Coon Creek? Why are we giving so much money to the chamber? Why are we, do you, you understand what, what I'm saying? And at least now that there's a, a record of us having these discussions as to what our priorities for the village and what our priorities for the village board and what are priorities for our residents, it's not hard to dispute. You understand that we're all I, I, I understand exactly, Mr. President. My question is the funds that you are supporting us with are strictly coming from the hotel motel tax, correct? Yes, but there are other uses as we've shared for that. I, I understand it, but you cannot use that for a public absolutely. vehicle. No, no, that's that's not okay. Well, that's what you're saying. You're absolutely you're absolutely correct. What I'm saying is is that it doesn't matter when you're justifying it to the public of why you spend dollars. It doesn't matter that you can talk about restricted funds. I understand. It doesn't matter any of that stuff. It, it needs to matter of how we justify this to our resident, residents. Okay. Regardless. I mean, you understand that it's restricted funds, just like the chamber does, just like everybody sits up on this board. But when you talk about the fact that we have a twenty dollar fee on our water bills already that people complain about for capital improvements to the water department that we still hear about. And then the village is going to go and let another one pay for a public works garage. I'm not saying that I'm not for it. I'm not saying that it's not needed. I'm not. I'm just saying that that's ultimately what's going to happen. No, I, I get it. I mean, like Mr. Cole said, we can cut back and we will draw less people, which will be less business for the businesses in town. Our fireworks, can we cut it down to, our fireworks are going to be $1,100 a minute this year, give or take, all right? We are in, Hampshire is in the Fox Valley region, which consists of 34 communities. Some of them are St. Charles, Pacal, Sycamore, Elgin, Huntley, South Elgin, Bloomingdale. The Daily Herald has us in the top five for our fireworks display. That's what draws that we have two signature events, the fireworks and the free corn. Those are our signature events. I can't cut down on the fireworks. Um, as we said, this is the hotel motel fund. The projection is for $30,000 to be in there. Um, what else would the village use that money for if we don't put it towards these events? Well, we've used it a lot for the marketing. Um, and different initiatives that we've done. Um, I think we actually paid for the rebranding out of that too, didn't we? Mm -hmm. When we when we did the rebranding in that. Did that include a request for a hotel stay for people to cover that? No, but it had yes, it did. It, it, we have brochures. Oh, that's right. We did do the brochure. We have brochures printed for overnight stays. So yes, that was all according to. So the, the rebranding in here. Well, no, we didn't pay for the actual rebranding. It was the, it was the actual total cost of the rebranding and. The, Relaunch of the brand and the public, the brochures and all that kind of stuff. But that was a one time. It was completed two years ago, so it's really not going. We don't have any other requests for funds at this point, and the staff doesn't have any recommendations. It's entirely your guys' nice call. So for for this fund, then we have a request for nineteen thousand by Coon Creek, and then we have a request for six thousand. That's twenty five thousand, leaving five thousand additional for the village to use for marketing or other things. There are no plans for those funds right now. They're just available in the fund. And we generate roughly how much per year? $30,000. Okay. Get a little breather on there. As far as, I'm not asking for a recommendation, but I'm asking financial, like financially we're good. 
as far as that goes. In the hotel, like, hotel tax? Yeah, like just just having that five thousand dollars in there should there's not something that could pop up that we would need to force as far as the hotel requesting money. So that that would be um obviously considered, I would think, is if the hotel asked for um something comparable to a facade grant, that would come that would be um excellent use of these funds. And if we don't have funds in the account. How does that how does that work? I mean, are that we obligated to give that to them? Or, or I guess I, we've never had that process. Is it like the facade improvement grant where they would have to apply for it? We would have to approve it. They would. They absolutely. Would okay, so they can't just come up and say, "Here's a bill. You need to pay." No. It. Okay, that's no. okay, that's. I understand. What um, amount was used to this year, and what's left from this year then? So with our projected. Um, Income and expenditures, we will end with a fund balance of approximately $53,000. So you would add that $5,000 expected to be in excess, you know, revenue and excess of expenses um, in fiscal year 24, leaving approximately $58,000 at the end of fiscal year 24. So right now we have $53,000 sitting do. in that account. We do. Which yeah. can be used towards the hotel for things that they need that can be used for marketing or it can be moved over into the next fiscal year. Uh, Correct. And there's no way we could tie any of the other costs. Like the street dance, if we had a real estate booth out and handed out flyers from the new housing projects and uh, hotel pamphlets, that wouldn't be considered. There, there are a lot of things that we could do creatively to spend that money. Just ask us to do it and we'll come back with plans. There you go. Okay. Just let you do it. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, that's great. I, I, I understand. I'm sorry. I keep looking at you. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm a little I, confused by the questioning here. No, I, I think we're trying to figure it out too. Though. So okay. I, that, that's really it's realistic. What it is, I don't think that we're trying to be like like inquisitive in a negative nature. I think I, we're trying to figure it out too. Mike coming off that way to all of us, frankly. My question mm -hmm. is on this nineteen thousand that we got Village of Hampshire special events. If we put if we push real estate. Like at a booth at every one of these events, could we use the hotel motel tax to pay for it? What does real estate have to do with a hotel overnight stay? I don't mean real estate. Um, promoting overnight stays in Hampshire. With one hotel. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure I, out. I, I, I'm, I'm trying. To, are, you, are you trying to find a way to spend the funds? That's no, we're trying to. Use. We're trying to get. The funds to be used for this nineteen thousand. That's all. We we will we can look into the legality of that. There's there's possibility that that can be done. Okay. If we don't use any of the funds currently, and but we still fund the the account, we could have. Well, actually, we don't fund it. The tax dollars come in from the hotel motel, and if we don't give the money um, to Coon Creek or to the chamber. We would then have about seventy-eight thousand dollars sitting in that fund. Correct. Okay. I'm comfortable, but I mean, I, I don't speak for the committee. I'm comfortable moving forward with what's been requested. I mean, I think if we can get creative, maybe a little, if we need to, that might be an avenue to go down. But I, mean, I don't speak for the committee. You guys are I'm fine moving forward. You're fine moving forward with the request with the as request is. As Mr. Hoth, too. Yep. And don't mistake us for trying to find anybody. I think, honestly, I'm trying to figure it out. That's realistically, and I need to you guys for guidance. That's what, I, that's what I'm attempting to do. So I apologize if it's coming off any other way. I'd like to reiterate to everybody present that the board supports Coon Creek. They support the chamber. We are grateful for all of the time, effort, and money that you put in to running these events that make our town a fun place to be and a destination point for people to come to see, to participate. Um, Thank you. And I'm glad that the board is, is has the general consensus to keep moving that forward. Um, this fund is used specifically for motel funds. And so it is limited. And um, it's true that pointing out the fact that it's gonna just sit there if it doesn't get used or it gets rolled over, um, should anybody ask us for something that would fall into it, but um, immediate needs of the town and the chamber and Green Creek, I think, are important. So um, 
Unless you have any more questions or anything you'd like to add? We appreciate everything that the village has done for us well, the, with the police, the fire, public works. Uh, it's a huge event. It's a staple in the village. I think the village residents want this. We bring outsiders all the way from Chicago to this event. You've all been to the fest. You know how, how it's crazy and everything. We get no compensation whatsoever. We have no perks except maybe sore muscles, sunburn, less lack of sleep. I mean, but other than that, we enjoy what we do. Our, our biggest compensation is seeing everybody having a great time. I mean, we don't do it for us. We do it for the village and for the residents. I, I'd just like to say I appreciate everything that the board has done. You guys have really made my transition into this role at a very hard time during COVID and everything. You guys have been awesome to work with every single step of the way. And uh, I've had a lot to learn and I've learned a lot of lessons and I appreciate you guys being patient as I've gone through and uh, kind of taken on the role. So I appreciate it. Yeah. I think that one that credit goes to the staff. Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Not the board. All we do is cause headaches. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you both for coming and then coming back. We really no, appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, if, if, if then we can move down to the Hampshire Beautification Facade Improvements. And um, I know we don't have um, Mr. Krajewski here or Mr. Swalwell or anybody else. Um, but that fund is separate. Um, that is is funded out of besides the eating tax. We're just the rest of that money is general right into the general fund expense. Yes. Okay. Um, and the, I'm bringing that one up for discussion. The request has been made for a hundred thousand. Um, last year we gave one hundred and sixty nine thousand to that. But as had been discussed prior, that some of those years had not been fully funded. Um, we gave less one year, so we kind of looked at it as it kind of brought us to even. Um, so now we have a hundred thousand dollar request. Do we reduce that to put some of that money towards the garage, public works? Do we bring it out there for discussion? I agree with projecting. If you take money out of that fund now, you're you going to take the wind out of downtown. You say that again. <laughs> I, agree, I agree with Ryan for <laughs> If you take money out of that fund, you're going to take the wind out of the freaking downtown and all the work that staff has done to get it and move it along. It'll be detrimental if we, if we touch that beautification program. And, then, and at the end of the day, if we allocate a hundred thousand to this and it does and we don't have a hundred thousand worth of projects because maybe there's not as many people moving in or trying to pull I mean it's not like we're it's not we're it's not like we're expensive. Well if we put a mechanism in place to fund this and that mechanism has doubly funded this. So I am in full support of giving continuing the one hundred thousand dollars as well. Um I know public works desperately needs that garage, but as both and Mr. Krajewski have said, you take that money away now, and then all that hard work we have put in for the past what five years. That, why did we do it? Actually, so, six years. Six years. Why did we do it then? Why did we just redo State Street? It, I see no point to lowering that at all. Amongst the members of the committee, um, I want to ask. If you would agree with, or if I raised with the uh, option of making that a hard hundred thousand, not to go over. I think we did that at a board meeting, and it was approved and voted on. That was for the current fiscal year. This is the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. No, I think that was pretty much standard policy. It was it? standard policy. Yep. Moving forward. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I, actually, what what I intend to uh, talk to Trustee Kelly about, and also um, a Chairman Krajewski is possibly having one or two uh, deadlines so that we're considering all the grants at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we, they would come in one at a time, one every few months or so, and now we, we're we seeing them all come in at the same time and they can be evaluated at the same time. But I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that was the issue last year. We had a few come in right at the end right. where we felt this is a val these are all valuable projects that need to be funded, but they just just the timing of it was... Right, and we also shared that. with you, as uh, Trustee Polistri said, that over the years we had understood the funding. Mm -hmm. Right. In most years, we understand. Right. So over the right. six years, we did spend almost exactly six hundred thousand dollars over six years. Right. Uh, trust, trustee Kelly. I was just going to say, and to that point, yes, they needed to be funded, uh, Trustee Robinson. But with a hard hundred, which I completely agree with, 
we're going to have to say no to projects that need to be funded because we just don't have it. We're going to have to tell those businesses apply again next year. And that's not a bad thing. I think, you know, in retro, maybe we also don't need to fund every project at 75%, right? And we tend to have, and I've been on those votes too, so I'm, I'm a part of it with all of, with the entire board, but we tend to fall back to a 75% funding, which then eliminates a lot of that fund available pretty quickly. And so that could, there are mechanisms in place to be able to fund more things, just maybe at lower rates or lower. And then when those businesses come in and it's super needed, but we don't have funds, apply next year. Mm -hmm. I think in year seven of this program, we, I don't know, gained some ability to be more restrictive. In the beginning, we were trying to get as much done as we could and try to you know, gauge interest and try to get as much accomplished as much as we could. But I think now, I think we're afforded the luxury of being a little bit more restrictive. I think there are opportunities, as Trustee Palestrini asked, there are opportunities that we're going to be looking at to refine and uh, update the program and the application for the program based on a lot of the learnings over the first six years, not just from the qualifications or what type of things, right? Because there were a lot of one-offs that we said, well, that's not really a part of the program, but it's needed. I think the Bassett Rescue, there's a lot of internal that historically that's not what the facade was for, but it was super needed, right? It was trusses. It was things that had to happen. So I think that there's going to be an opportunity to refine the requirements of that program, but also put in some, some pretty defined penalties for businesses that don't follow the rules of and what they agree to within that program. Uh, and so I think trustee policy new to your question, that is something that needs to happen before the next uh, fiscal year, but that is something that is on the BDC and the beautification committee's uh, agenda. Thank you. Anything else then on the uh, beautification facade improvements? Is it the general consensus of the committee to move forward with the full hundred thousand dollar request? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I, I want to jump down to the large group gathering staffing fee since it has been brought up, but there's been really nothing that came out of it just yet. Um, are we looking then to include that? Well, we've already said that we're going to give the full amount as requested then. Is this something that we want to look at moving forward? maybe the next fiscal year, or is it something that we're just going to, to take out of the general fund as additional support for the community? I get, I, my, vote, my vote being on the, on the board is uh, I'm against staffing fee. I, I'm, I'm being charged to the absolutely. organization. Okay. You're, you're, that'll just force them to run smaller programs mm -hmm. or we got to run more mm -hmm. and you're going to lose the flavor of the town. Well, I agree, agree, but I think that at some point, I think realistically, I think it just needs to be watched, you know, and I, the reason I say that I think it needs to be watched is because right now we're, we're spending 20000 and we're comfortable spending 20000 a year. And I think, Mike, I think Mike, look where we're getting out of the twenty grand. No, I, I understand. We're getting buildings, we're getting people pounding on his door wanting to build here, we're getting downtown businesses wanting to come here. I'm, not, so, I'm totally not disagreeing, but what I'm saying, the only thing that I'm asking is, is that we have some, maybe it's not a bad idea to have checks and balances. And that, that's all I'm saying. And so at the end of next year, as far as the budget goes, it would be nice, you know, the budgeting process, if this jumps up from 19000 to $50,000 a year, that, that's a different conversation. And this at that point, we'll have that conversation. This is something that we're beginning to track now within the uh, streets department and within the police department. I think it would, I think this was a good exercise internally to figure out what it costs. So I think it's important that the board knows now what it does cost. <clears throat> I think there's a good opportunity to highlight at the end of every fiscal year, maybe throughout in the summer or sometime when after there's been some time to collate the numbers, but just what the village does do uh, to support the local organizations and community events that are happening, whether it's a community involvement report or whatever. And those numbers that you and Ms. Lyons put together should be included as part of what we're doing to support. I'm not saying we should charge Coon Creek for their, for police and streets and people on there, because it's also us serving the community. 
but I think that there should be some recognition that the village is doing more than just cutting a check. Great. Ms. Lyons, um, um, can we keep that going then to sure. continue to monitor keep that? Um, maybe periodically, I know you bring reports every few months, et cetera, maybe periodically to kind of give us an update. Obviously, the, we're not doing too much in January, February, March, you know, but to kind of let us know where we're at. We'll do. Okay. I think, honestly, I think a good time for that would be is, you know, August and then mm -hmm. after, after Coon Creek is over, so maybe okay. September, you know, and we have an idea of how much Coon Creek costs. Sure. And then, you know, maybe then whatever six months from September and then we're done. We, we keep track of monthly so we can report it in time. Okay, that's right. wonderful. I just think it's important, that's all. I just think it's important that everybody knows that kind of stuff. Okay. All right, that, that moves that to building permit fees. As to next, and- Oh, Josh, would you like to? Yeah, I have a few, uh, yes, you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I have a few smaller dollars to talk about. Uh, just wanted to make you all aware that uh, staff is going to be proposing that the village board uh, consider adopting these certificate of occupancy uh, fees to go along with their existing permit fees. Um, there's kind of two sections here. Uh, well, there's residential and commercial, but then there's also new construction versus a change in ownership or a change in tenancy. So if you all recall when the 2018 building codes were adopted, one of the additions to the code was that whenever there is a change in tenant or occupant uh, or, or type of use for a commercial building, um, then the village would have the right to require a certificate of occupancy, um, which is when the fire district and the building inspector get to go in and make sure everything is safe and, and secure. Might have been 20 years since the last time an inspector was in there, so that was the whole point. Um, so now we're just we're we're uh, asking the board to not codify, but to pass the fees that will go along with those inspections. Um, it's not required for residential, but it is uh, the, the village has the right to do so if it knows of an issue when a house sells. Oftentimes we don't even know that a house sells or that a new renter moves in, but if we happen to know, then then we can uh, decide at that point. Um, so that's what the two white stripes that are for that change in occupancy type situation. The two gray stripes are on new construction. Uh, currently, the village doesn't charge any kind of occupancy on new construction, and I think every single other community in the area does. Um, generally, it's, it's anywhere from $50 for residential to $300 for a commercial. It really varies. Um, and the reason that we're asking the board to consider a fee is to cover the time that it takes the village staff, not the building inspectors, not the, not the fire district, but the village's public work staff, really, and administration staff to deal with the, the closing of a permit, the occupancy. You know, there's an inspection that public works does. They make a sheet of list, uh, especially if there's a temporary certificate of occupancy, and then the public works has to go back out and do it again um, to cover some of that time because it's never been covered in the past. So that's $75 for every new home and $150 for a new commercial construction. New home. New home. So if I sell my house to you, do you got to pay $75? It's not required. If if the village happened and knew that there were issues at that home that you were selling, we could require it. Uh, but it, that's not going to be required on every new sale because, frankly, we, we can't track every sale of a home. But I, I would think in every every sale of a home, uh, at any used home, per se, there's a building. They hire a, a home inspector. That's incumbent on uh, yeah, Josh is talking about life health. Excuse me, life safety kind of. Of risk, not just an ordinary building, but you have uh, you know, the molding in your bathroom to get needs to be repaired. That's the kind of thing you get on home inspection. The judge is talking about it. If there were, we have we have a, a home here in town that's uh, at the Sons of Willard, I can't remember, it's been abandoned now for like three years. If somebody moved into that, we'd want to have a health safety inspection. We have, a, we have a home also that's unoccupied that we know that it has the sewer line has collapsed. Yeah. And so we, um, it would be sorry. Go ahead, no. It would just be very rare for us to go into a residence. This is a kind of much longer. Wouldn't the the buyer's home inspection reveal that the sewer lines collapsed? So, if they um, so it, it's a home that was in foreclosure, um, buying as is. So, I mean, we would just want to make sure that it was repaired okay. and permitted properly because it's probably going to require, you know, um, significant. Or reconstruction. Yeah, that's kind of on the buyer. 
we uh, our village has a responsibility only if there's a life safety concern right. for the residents. Right. So we would only use this for residents if that were the case. Okay. It is quite often where we have a new business move into a building for new use. That's where we're really concerned about. I understand the okay. concern. I can't, I, I really can only mention two places where we might use this for residents. Okay. And how would you find out? Only because we see it, uh, if it's obvious to us, that's the only way oh, we would that, Okay, that's what I'm asking. I'm, no, the reason why I'm asking is because of the, do they, I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. Like when you, when you buy a new home and then you come into the village hall to set up your water bill account, is then there a flag that goes up that says, hey, give me the 75 Yeah, dollars. and some communities actually have a transfer tax. So you can right. track every transaction. You can sell stamps and require a transaction tax. That's not what we're proposing. But if, if somebody brings to our attention that there's a life safety concern in a house, or we can see it obviously from the street, we feel like the village has a maybe not a responsibility, but it would be a good idea for the village to concern, be concerned about the, the safety of that home. I agree. And yes, I, I would presume uh, Trustee Robin said <coughs> any good building inspector would check all those things uh, before they uh, close on a house. What about those phone calls that we get from time to time about landlords not doing it in honor committee? We wouldn't have got through the first month. You know, <laughs> I don't question you when you speak or raise. Go ahead, Mike. So if, when we get the calls all the time about residents saying that my landlord's not doing this or my landlord's doing this or whatever, and we say, well, that's really, we really have no, we don't really have any say in that. Does any of this apply to that? No. No. If, if you want to deal with those issues, then we need a landlord tenant rep, um, ordinance in the town. And a lot, most communities in Cook County do have a landlord tenant ordinance, and it manages that relationship very, very specifically. I drafted one in uh, 19. Uh, 82 in uh, no, I think back it was 1978 in Hoffman Estates. So they've had they've had a landlord tenant ordinance since 1978. But you can set code enforcement. Yeah, sure. There's yeah, there's certain things that the property maintenance code would require a landlord to maintain, uh, such as heat during the winter. But um, a lot of things that tenants complain about are not not things that fall within the code. Again, life safety. If there's not heat there. That's a life safety issue. There's not like water in the winter. But like mice. No, that's not something that we get a lot of phone Yeah. Lower community. Well, what our recipe? <laughs> I was just curious. Yep. So these would be I'll new be fees, fees that are not currently being levied Correct. at all. So this would be an ordinance that would come to the village board then to establish those. Correct. Yeah, two, two of those sections are new fees to accompany new activity. And the other two, the two in, in uh, gray, are two fees of activity we already do and don't charge for. It. Okay. Um, but we'd like to, because it does take significant staff time. And this is something that we work closely with the fire department. What about the fact that we're talking about new, um, new residences? So that's separate and aside from the builder themselves. It's the new owner comes in then. No, the, the builder see, would pay this a time of permit fee. So this would be an additional amount that was you know, the builder. Does that jeopardize the agreements we already have in place no. with builders? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. That brings us to the motor vehicle fee. And I will hand it over to you then. Okay. With that, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you to... Take a look at this packet, and for those of you online, you got an email that came from uh, Lori, I believe, this afternoon. Um, we will discuss, I'd like to discuss this uh, well, this packet in two ways. First, to discuss the, the fee that's proposed, and then secondly, to discuss the need for the building. I think they, that we pretty well established the need for the building. The board seems like they understand that, but I think Dave is here and also Bill, and I, I'd like to go through it again with you briefly. But first of all, uh, we spent well, quite a bit of time. This is this is the uh, I, I believe Trustee Cody. The night I was uh, appointed by the board, you you were trying to you made a motion to approve an addition on the current public works specific. So this has been going on for a long time. This needs been demonstrated for a long time. So we we've, we've been looking for several years. I'm sorry, Mr. Hedges, just real quick. I don't mean to interrupt, but I do not have uh, this packet in my email. Yeah, you do. I have budget minutes that were sent it's, to it's, me. It was a pretty large it, file. Oh. I'll send it again right now. It's 10 megabytes. It probably won't go through. It will. Josh, it's definitely it attached. 
Oh, I got it, and I printed it out. Okay. Josh is looking you up. It's on its way. It's coming. Um, so, okay. and Trustee Coth, you were at the last meeting, and I believe mo almost all of this material was at the last meeting, except so, some slides that we're going to show at the end that Josh will put up on the screen now. Um, so I just want to remind you that you have in your packet um, a proposed uh, ordinance that would, make, that would create a $10 bi-monthly fee for household. It would be a vehicle fee. This assumes that each household only has one vehicle, and uh, and it also uh, so so this is an alternative to what many communities, especially in Cook County, uh, have a vehicle license fee, so a vehicle sticker, and that ranges anywhere from twenty five to seventy five dollars per vehicle per home, and that's very common in, in the in the uh, inner inner suburbs. Um, so that's not an option. For, excuse me, that would be an option for us. It would be expensive to administer. There are also um, be per vehicle instead of per home. So we felt that th this $10 fee per per, uh, per my, my monthly billing cycle would be $60 per home in this community. That would be adequate to fund. We'll talk about funding soon, but that would be adequate to fund a public works garage at roughly $160,000 of debt service per year um, for a roughly $1.5 to $1.7 million building. And we don't know what that cost will be because um, this time around we will have to go through proper bidding and uh, do everything according to the uh, requirements for public buildings. It must be a bondable building. Uh, so there are quite, quite a few expenses that will be involved this time around. Um, so staff has looked into various kinds of revenue. We looked into a quarter percent uh, sales tax, which is not permitted. There's legislation in Springfield that would, would allow that outside of Cook County, but right now it's not. There's a, a quarter percent motor fuel tax that could be added. In Cook County, but not available to us. Well, this is action that, that the legislature has been considering for several years, but no action has been successful. Uh, an increase in the, in the uh, local government distributed fund would also help us greatly. There's legislation currently being considered that would help us there, but that's also failed the last three years in a row. So, with that in mind, uh, we got creative and we came up with a way that Yorkville had done this. We, we found out that Yorkville had, had passed a very similar uh, ordinance. So, we went to the law firm that wrote that. Uh, which is Otison, Dinaldo, Hanson, Ball, and Castaldo. And we have with us tonight Aaron Kiernett. Uh, Sorry, Aaron, Aaron, I can't pronounce your name. Um, but Aaron is with us tonight online, and she's happy to answer questions about that. So you have before you a summary of the project that I just described. And then if you, if you flip through this, you have the ordinance, the proposed, proposed ordinance that we would bring back to you if this is approved in the budget, um, as well as. Uh, Excuse me. If you go a little further back, um, there's a memo from uh, Eric that I spoke spoke to, explaining uh, what it would what the how important the uh, street facility is and how we would use the North Fields Act to fund that. Um, there's several there's several uh, memor memorandums in this packet that I just thought you should have a background. But if you if you if you'll go to the page, um, I'm sorry, they're not page numbers here. This is rather a rushed meeting. Um, but it, there is the first page. I'm sorry, to be halfway through the packet, that is a spreadsheet. Okay, that shows the the um, what the fee would be at six dollars per billing cycle, which would would theoretically cover our costs at a 1.5 million dollar building. Uh, and then on the right hand side, you have what a ten dollar per uh, billing cycle PDP. The annual revenue from the $6 fee would have been 118, which would not have been enough for our debt service. The revenue for the um, $10 fee would be $198,000. $125 of that would go toward debt service, and that would leave us theoretically about $60,000, $65,000 that could be used for other street repairs and, and capital projects. Um, as you know, we have currently a $10 utilities fee bi monthly. Excuse me, ten dollar water fee bi monthly, as well as a ten dollar sewer fee bi monthly. Those funds are actually funded very well. You see, it every year we come in and we have to move sometimes a little bit from one to the other. But those ten dollars fees fund those departments very well. The streets department doesn't have a, 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 any kind of revenue like that, and uh, all of our motor fuel tax funds are restricted to very specific construction reconstruction of streets and very specific uses, so they cannot be used for this purpose. So with that in mind, we believe that this is a very good use, of a very good source of funds. Uh, we don't think it's a huge burden on our residents. 
And we think that it's very important not only for to continue to, in my mind, outperform every community in this area in terms of how we how we keep our streets clean, uh, how we uh, you all invested in that. And uh, Trusty Polo Stream's favorite piece of equipment, our new street sweeper, which is used all the time. I believe we even lent it to uh, Gilbert's just this month. And uh, so this department does a lot with very little resources. Now I'd like you to just look to this, the, the pictures of your book and Jeff, if you can put the PowerPoint uh, presentation on the screen. We, we, I explained at the last board meeting that we have a safety committee that has been implemented just this year. And our safety committee did its first uh, review of all facilities last month, and Josh gave that walk around with them. And uh, so I'd like to just flip through this real quickly. Um, this is an annual inspection report. You can see on, on the second page all the questions that were asked, main categories, so that you get an idea what this is, how this program works. When we got to the streets department, uh, the next slide, please, Chef. Uh, this, this, is, this is sort of the score at the, at the streets department compared to all the other buildings. Uh, we had 69 failures. Um, and 38 of those are uncorrected in this current facility. And we'll talk a little, we'll see about more examples of that. In the other buildings, you can see we had very few failures um, and, and they're all corrected. If you flipped in the next page, there's more specifics to this. Um, unsafe storage of flammable materials, unsafe storage of compressed gas, unsafe storage, I, I won't read them all, but um, I, I would invite you all, as Trustee Cope has several times, to visit the Public Works Department anytime, the Streets Department. It's a very congested area. I believe you all saw in a newsletter a couple months ago that we had a, we showed a story about one of our employees who was welding on a vehicle, and uh, you know he's in very cramped quarters with the welding equipment that's you know, only a few feet away from some other things that are um, not good. Let's just leave it at that. So you can read for yourself those specifics. When you just see some photographs of the same situations. Mr. Hedges, now that we know that this department is so unsafe and this many failures, how can we still keep our employees working in there? Well, so we're going to be working at corrective actions as much as we can. And uh, it, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we did it now because if we could put any longer for safety committee, um, we, this community has never had a safety, safety program before. To my knowledge, anyway, and uh, so when we started this project about six months ago, it was a large undertaking. In fact, uh, our utilities department took the initiative to actually call OSHAN for their voluntary self evaluation, and we passed with flying colors in that department. Um, we could have called them in here too. Um, there, there's a you know a, a divining wall, I'll say, between the two, and uh, so we could have called them in, but we chose to use our own safety committee instead, and, and we. We found these. If we'd have brought OSHA inspectors in on a voluntary inspection, I suspect that they would have found more. So we're going to address these very aggressively, and I may be back in front of you at some point in the future asking for other funds. Um, but in the meantime, we're doing what we can to make it as safe as possible. So I think uh, with that, my purpose here tonight was to demonstrate the need of the public works garage, which I believe we have, and also to recommend to the board. And this is for your entirely for your decision. We believe that this is the best way to fund the project, the project with the least impact on our residents and the fairest impact on our residents, um, as opposed to resident taxes who going to a referendum for that matter. So, uh, but that certainly is a policy decision by this board, and um, we defer to you on that decision. But that's our recommendation. And I would suggest that there, well, it is certainly your choice to cut other things in the budget uh, to accommodate this, this streets garage uh, funding. As Trustee Coe said, those cuts would have to be made for 20 years uh, to generate these kinds of funds. And uh, um, I would just encourage you to um, uh, consider this as an all-in or all-out. Either we build a garage with the fee or we don't build a garage. That's that's my recommendation. So with that, thank you. So you're saying if we don't approve this fee, we don't build the garage? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying that's our recommend. My, the staff's recommendation is that we... We can't find $150,000, $198,000 of this would generate and other places in the budget. We we have not found those. Now, Lori has addressed some of the questions that you've asked before. And we'll get to that, too. And it's $198,000 or $150,000. $198,000 for the next 20 years. Dave, out of here. 
on a snow event, how long does it take you to get your trucks in and out of the garage before you do anything? Before we leave to go on the route? Yes. Um, I'd say close to an hour. And then it's the same coming back? Uh, it's probably. I mean, when, when you're done, you're back. Yeah, it, it's a different operation when we get back. And then we got the, the trucks that sit outside, we have to um, back them up to the, the bin and straighten them out by hand because um, you can't leave the salt in there or else it will just turn into a solid sheet of salt and it just creates problems in the auger and the pan. So sometimes it could take longer when we get back. And this was the time that we wanted to go home. It's 11 o'clock at night. You know, we got to be back at 3, 4 in the morning. And, you know, here the guys are out there and 10 degree weather, it's snowing on, they just want to get some sleep. Okay. So how, how do you go about taking the trucks and washing the salt off the augers and all the parts on the back end? How do you, can you get them all in the garage to do that? No, um, we actually, um, we can only fit four trucks in the garage in the loader. We have six snow plow trucks that sit out all winter long. So we have to pull everything out and bring a single vehicle in. So during that that three days of that, we had bitter cold. Was that December? Yeah. Where it was below zero. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, how did you guys get the truck started? Um, I don't know if you of them didn't. <laughs> and and it's just because it was so cold, and you know the block years wouldn't heat the fuel and, and the block like it should, and they wouldn't start. So what we have to do is then uh, hopefully they have you know, air in the tank so we can drag them in by a chain and let them thaw out. And that'll give the diesel a, a chance to turn from a solid back to a liquid. But the problem is, is you know, you should be on the road. It's a real struggle. I, I, I'll, I, I'll admit it. It's, it's a real struggle over there. And uh, I can see the frustration of the guys and myself. It's been 14 years and you've been in the same building. And I think that thing was probably built for two guys. And now we got seven plus the four from water and sewer that come out and give us a hand during the winter. You know, we got, you know, including myself, 11 employees in this cramped little space. And it's just, it's time. It really is. It's time. We, we need a building. And it's, yeah. In a new building, you'd be able to spray these off inside in the, in the warmth and then park them off to the side, or you'd be able to leave, or you'd be able to leave the salt in them so that when you come back in at three o'clock in the morning, you can just get in the truck and go back home and then deal with the spraying them off in the morning. Yeah, sure. Some of the equipment and things. And, and, and one other question on that, on the next thing. Prior to a snow event on a new building, could you preload the trucks the day before and park them inside so you could just take off so you don't have to worry about loading them at four o'clock in the morning or three in the morning and busting up the salt? We can't load anything against it's outside. I mean, okay, in, a, in a new building. building. Oh, in the new building? Yeah, and you preload yeah. trucks and park them inside. We've got a great snow, snow removal crew and operation. I think it's one of the best. But yes, to answer your question, we can load everything in like there. We can load like everything. <laughs> And put it inside and be ready because we know when we know when the storm's coming. We can't do that now. I mean, we're half ready and half, you know, sitting out in the cold and hope hope they start. Um, there are quite a few improvements that we're putting in the new building. Also, an indoor truck wash and under undercarriage truck wash. There'll be a nice locker room, finally, a lunch room, an office for Dave. He, have, he shares an office. He shares his office with the lunch room and a locker room. So. There, it'll be it'll be a proper facility. We'll do it right. Any other questions on the need? When was the um, the garage first proposed? Two thousand and when did Toby get on the board? Toby, when did you get elected? Yeah. Seven eight years ago. Well, it was longer than that. Uh, we even went as far as getting EEI involved and. Uh, trying to change the floodplain line to build a building behind the building they're at. Uh, We're bringing in a bunch of dirt to raise up the property. So yeah, we, we did. So $300,000 worth of clay we had. Yeah, home. we did it a whole year of, of going to every agency trying to. We were looking at a site across from a high school, 
Yeah, we fell through. We even had plans for the building. Yeah, we got the school district to give up on their recapture agreement. They 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 were we partnered with the fire department, and uh, they were going to build their station two on the one parcel, and then we were going to build public works on the other parcel. And school district 300 and that property right across on uh, Big Timber and Ketchum. There's a huge recapture agreement that's owed on that property, and they were willing to for, to like, forgo it because of us and the fire department. But then it turns out that there's this huge gas main there, and they were just burying it at the time. We even tried to negotiate with the gas company to get them to lower it. Oh, they would have lowered it for yeah. a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, but they, they were literally in the ground, and they wouldn't put it any lower for us. So yeah. I guess the argument would be to residents, we've spent 750 to a million dollars on equipment to keep the village running properly. That's all sitting outside uh, in the snow and the sun and the rain. Well, we've seen, the, that, we've so. seen the maintenance fees and the repair fees, and we're throwing money away. And the time every year. We just had this argument. We just had this argument as it pertains to community events. And it's hard, and I, I did ask for this information, but it's hard to quantify with how much time they spend working on their own equipment. Well, Not that that doesn't happen, you know, on a regular basis, but how much time do we put into fixing? The thing that Lori could maybe is get out of out of the data would be bills from Napa, okay. um, oh, yeah. bills from Payline West, or places like that where where. Because uh, because Napa tell the tale, right? They're not going to you know you can't go get a candy bar now. But that doesn't get breaks and rollers. That doesn't and, say how, that doesn't say how much time as an example Adams putting in a fuel pump. No. Or no. how many times he's got to run back to Napa because something else broke while he's trying to get to the fuel pump, as an example. And so I mean, but that kind of information is hard to, to to quantify. But that there's well, I mean, if you're going to explain, if you have to explain to the residents why they're getting a ten dollar charge. 60 bucks a year is a lot cheaper than going out in two more years or three more years and spending another three quarters to a million or more on, on equipment that's now rotted because it's been set outside. And the board also approved 2,000 homes here, another 1,000 over there, Camp's Farm. I mean, we just almost doubled, well, no, have we doubled the homes in the village? What's, these three projects, so yeah, we're going to need to double the equipment. We got nowhere to put it, and we have nowhere to put it. So, what is the thought? The question. I mean, we're not even talking about building a building yet. I mean, what we're talking about, it, but like, what is there anything that that other building is useful for? Uh, in, the, in our original plan uh, a couple of years ago, we talked about selling it. We actually had somebody interested in selling and buying it. Uh, Dave would like to keep the property as a use it for uh, explain I know the dump in the back on how you used some of that property. Yeah in the back um we, that's where we dump all our spoils and, we and the sweeper stuff. Sweeper. Yeah. Um we did have a company that was interested in buying the whole property. We had it appraised and I believe the appraisal came in around two hundred and fifty thousand for the whole property. Yeah. And uh so we, we and we would have to sell it at eighty percent of the appraised value. So if you go behind the village garage to the north of it, there's a big open area that the sweeper, when they are done sweeping, sweeping the streets, they dump back there. It's a lot of leaves, a lot of debris, a lot of water. And the sewer, when the sewers collapse, the companies haul back there, they haul the sewer spoils back there, and all that water eventually goes into the creek so, or into the ground. I mean, it's not, it's not like we were sitting on a, a huge. What I'm saying is, it's not like if we were deciding to sell that, it's going to that it would contribute that much to the street, the new building, overall, like bottom line. So well, like, we, we would come back to you with that in the next fiscal year. We would look at the opportunity, see what the prices for and how possibly and see if there are any buyers out there. But I at the know. end of the day, it sounds like it might be more useful for the operation to retain it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm getting And at. we would bring that back to you for all of you to make that decision. And if he could fit four trucks in there and the village continues to grow and we get rid of it, Right. In five years' time, we're going to be doing this whole dance again for another building or an addition. When we've already got a building we owe nothing on, we can use that as a middle of the ground. I guess, I, guess, I don't mean to get too far into the weeds here, but we already know how many streets are approved now, like that are coming. 
was the building that's proposed big and be big enough to house the equipment that we're going to need to support the streets that are already approved. I, I'm not talking about anything that's not no, no, um, Mr. President, those are that's probably 20 years with the construction and building, as we just talked about last night. Yeah. So I we have not estimated the value that this building will last 20 years, but I can tell you it's planned for the next 10 years. Will this that be your best? That's the best you could do anyway. Will this new building be able to accommodate all the growth that we've just approved? That's what, yes. Okay. It's planned for the next 10 years, okay. depending on how fast the development Right. Happens. Okay. But it probably would not uh, cover the 6,700 6, additional residents that would come with those 3,000 3, homes. Okay. Um, is it 10, you said it's a $10 bi monthly? Correct. $5 a month. So $60, $5 a year. So 60 years. So no, my no. question is, in no, 20 years when this is paid off, do we have, I know this is well beyond all our time. Are we taking a dirt? Are we going to take it away? My recommendation would not be to take it away because we, we still have the, the uh, water fee and the sewer fee, and those do a very good job of, of uh, funding our capital programs. And I'll just remind you all that in our capital budget, we still have $15 million worth of local streets that need to be repaired. Right. Uh, they're, they're, and, and also water and sewer lines. So this capital funding will, will fund the streets garage for 20 years, plus some additional, about $50,000 additional bondable improvements, street improvements. Uh, and then beyond that, it will go to other things, uh, other street repairs that we require and other equipment. So this is envisioned to be a permanent. Yes, that is my recommendation, just like the water and sewer fees. Let me ask this: Where are we if we increase that to sixty bucks a year? Where are we at in regards to some of the other villages' charges on the like what we're doing? That's a good question. I know uh, Henry Burr from the top of my head because that's been talked about. Lori may have a couple other examples to share with you. Our our minimum bill by monthly bill is twenty one dollars. It's twenty dollars for the two fees that we have, and I forget what the one dollar is for. Uh, minimum yeah. sewer charge. Minimum sewer charge. <laughs> billing, billing charge. Um, and then, of course, we have the garbage fee, which is pretty minimal on there too. Um, but um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? Where, where, where are we? Where do we sit as far yeah. as? So, if you go to Pingree Grove, Pingree Grove um, did did a master plan similar to the master plan that we're doing right now with EEI, and they also did it with EEI, and they did it about ten years ago, I believe. Um, when that happened, they, they went ahead and implemented those fees right away before they did any construction. So they started banking those funds for five or seven years now. Um, so their, their basic fee, the minimum fee in Big Road is $91, starting with $91. By monthly. By monthly. And okay. ours is 21. That's without a drop of water or That's anything. That's first gallon of water. Right. Laura, do you have any other examples? Yeah, I, I, if you give me a few minutes, I can bring up a survey that we were involved in. Um, <laughs> So let's continue on while she looks a little bit. So we're looking to go to 31. Correct. Pingree's at 91. Right. Pingree has a beautiful, very, it's a beautiful community, but very yeah, they have a beautiful garage. They do. <laughs> they also have a very little hall as well. Uh, commercial. Space. They have very little business. Right. So that that is... That's why there's so much burden on the residents. Right. The residents are basically footing the bill for the town. There is no tax help for them. So each of our businesses then just has ten dollars added. That's right. Same as all our residents. Mm -hmm. They're just a, they're an account. Each account. Do uh, do do communities do different water rates for commercial versus residential? Some do. Do we? We do not. We the only rate that we have that's different is um, for those that are outside of the village limits. Before we go down that road, how many businesses would that discourage from coming here? Mm -hmm. It depends on the fee. Correct. If you're going to raise it forty bucks or fifty bucks, it's nothing. If you're going to raise it a few hundred, that right. You can't plow the, if you don't plow the streets, you can't get to their business. If you don't have a business, you can't get into business either. I'm just going to take a question. You didn't speak. Homeowner has a What about people that do not actually, the homeowner does not own a car, but there's a car for business purposes 
when it comes to the house. Uh, that's a very that's a very good point, uh, Trust uh, Mott, and I. I was just uh, Josh was just reminding me that in the ordinance at in the ordinance as written, if a homeowner or business comes forward and signs an affidavit that says they don't have any vehicles in the residence, they would be accepted. Residence or business. If there are no vehicles, then they just give us an affidavit that says there are no vehicles and they're accepted. So that's, that's in the ordinance as written. So somebody that they own, I don't know, somebody owns a restaurant on State Street, they don't have a business vehicle of any kind. They would not pay the fee. They would not pay the fee. I, I would think that we should. Is there a way to write the ordinance that says, except if you're a business, you got no choice? Aaron, are you, are you with us? Yeah, yeah I'm here. <laughs> Okay. Oh, um, sorry. No, sorry. Two Aaron. Aaron with an E. Uh, Aaron, I don't know if you heard the question or not. Well, Mike, could you repeat that? So the ordinance as written says that if you don't have a vehicle, you can sign an affidavit that says no, you don't. And so I can understand that for a resident to, to trustee Mott's point. But for a business, if you own a restaurant, you may not have a vehicle owned by the business, so therefore you could sign an affidavit, or if you have a doctor's office or something of that nature, it may not be owned by the business. Is there a way to write the ordinance that says businesses have to pay the fee? Like they cannot, like the affidavit process is only for residents? We could change it, but we couldn't charge them a vehicle tax if they don't have a vehicle and we're using the vehicle tax as the way to get the fee. How do we do it with a water bill? That's just a capital improvement fee. All right. So yeah. They have, they have water and they have sewer, but and, that, and everybody has water and sewer, so okay. But we can't just charge a street speed because they're gonna put their shoes on the street, like they have to walk on it at some point. What would the wordage be on the bill? What do you mean? The, uh, the, the ten dollars. Uh, what would the, what would the wordage be on your? The ordinance is in your packet. The entire ordinance is there. I just thought you might know it off. Well, Kevin Aaron, does. Eric. Eric. Eric? What's it labeled as on the bill? Yeah, what would it be worded on? Worded as on the bill? Title? Yeah. So like, well, like now we got capital fees. No, capital fees. Okay. Vehicle fees. Okay. Okay. It's like an infrastructure. Aaron, Aaron, I'm sorry. There was a question. Um, it's a vehicle use fee. So instead of charging like a city sticker fee, it's a vehicle use fee, and we can change the title however you guys want. Okay. But again, going back to the businesses, we couldn't charge a vehicle use fee if somebody doesn't have a vehicle. We could find another way to charge them. Like you said, if you want to increase commercial water fees, other municipalities do it as long as it's reasonable. We could do it that way for businesses. Um, but we can't just charge every business a vehicle use fee if they're not actually using a vi vehicle. And because it's in place of a city sticker. It just doesn't actually have a physical vehicle sticker because of administrative costs. In your in your past dealings with this, what wordage would be more palatable than vehicle use fee? Because that would kind of tick me off. So would city sticker. Personal. I mean, that would tick me off. Yeah. If I don't need the bill, but if I read it and I saw vehicle use fee, that would tick me off. What what can we put down? Uh, That's what the tax is. It's a, sure. it's a tax. It's yeah. A fee. It's a you're charging them because they have a vehicle. So, oh which raises me to the to the point where you know I find it to be inequitable and discriminatory because you're treating certain residents different than other residents. And I'm going to use myself as an example. Sixty bucks doesn't bother me. But the way you're treating people, $60 is what I'm going to be paying for one car at my house. My next door neighbor has four cars plus a van. And he's also paying $60. Yes, per vehicle. Oh, no, 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 it's way. not. Or this way, this way. That's why I say it's inequitable and it's discriminatory against me because I'm paying the full boat. Maybe go out and buy another car. And he's not. <laughs> I mean, you go out and buy another car. It's not the point. It's, it's the way you're treating. No, I have to buy four. But the the the, and a the argument on that would be, if you have one car, ten cars, that public works snowplow truck is going to come down your street and plow just as much 
on a five car house as the one car house. And if a sewer breaks on, on the five car house or the one car house, they're going to come out and they're going to fix it the same way. But they'll do it the same for the person who doesn't have the vehicle whatsoever. Correct. So then does it have to be a vehicle fee because it cannot be a public works capital improvement project fee? Because the yes. water and the sewer are capital fees. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron can speak to that, but there's no statutory authority for the village to levy a street fee. Aaron, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, we did it as a vehicle tax to, because you're authorized to improve public ways. It's a creative way to try to fund a way a public works building when we don't have another option, basically. Without going to referendum. Yes, or increase, yeah, <laughs> increase taxes, go to referendum, or cut or, a bunch of fees. Or have a sticker fee where people have to come in and if you have the four vehicles in a van, you have to get stickers for every one of them. But they're using yes. the roads oh. for all four or five of those vehicles, so shouldn't they have to pay that way then? It's just if they do pay that way, then we're going to have to, um, there's administrative costs. So they're going to have to come in, they're going to have to fill out applications, you're going to have to give them stickers, and then there's enforcement costs. So this was a way to cut back on the enforcement costs, but still get the actual fees for the public work scratch. So if we charged, a, going back to the vehicle sticker, $25 per car, $40 per car, then times that by how many vehicles, aren't we gonna be getting more out of those households by doing that than to charge everybody across the board 60 bucks? Provided they kept the vehicle. If they sold a vehicle and bought a different vehicle or sold a vehicle and three months later bought another vehicle, we would have to hire another staff person to track that. Oh, it's usually it's we, transfer. Vehicle sticker. How are you going to know I bought a vehicle sticker for my car? You're Can I park it in the garage? It's a risk you take. I mean, it's just, it's a matter of, I mean, I grew up in Arlington Heights and we had vehicle stickers. So I grew up in Carpentersville, we had them too. You and nobody so, knew that we had my sticker. And unless you get caught. If you get stopped for some other offense, you're probably going to get yep. a ticket for that too. Right. You know, they, Arlington Heights used to charge for stickers for the lawn bags, for Pete's sake. You had to put Belgian it to a dollar I'm bag. Go ahead and knock out. I've been stopped for an offense and. You better not. You will tomorrow. Saying. I will tomorrow now. <laughs> <laughs> we had in other communities I was at, police would go up and down and they go through a street right. just to see. You can go up and down my street all day. Okay, so we have to call it a vehicle. You're not going to know I have sticker. Could, be, you could we put something in parentheses after? Vehicle use fee. We can. We're, we're changing our bill, so you can put whatever you want. Well, no, statutorily. No, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're talking to the attorney now. Sorry. So statutorily, what can we put on the? After it, after the vehicle use fee, in parentheses, could we put uh, uh, road repairs or? Aaron, Aaron he's speaking to, uh, on our actual water bill. Oh, on the actual water bill you water want. Bill. It, right now, like the ordinance says it's a vehicle tax. So, sorry, I called it a vehicle use fee because we've had different drafts. Um, yeah, however you guys direct me to draft it, that's up to you. It's just, it's the vehicle, the way we're getting the money <laughs> is to yeah. repair roads and for public works. So well, it's got to come from that tax. It's got to be part of that tax. Let me ask but you yes, this. we can add it's extra it's stuff. It's more a question of if we're being, if we're misrepresenting anything. Right now, the water and sewer, if I just say capital fee, water capital fee, mm -hmm. sewer capital fee. Mm -hmm. If we say street capital fee on our water bill, that's not in any way a violation of this ordinance, correct? Aaron? Um, if you it's describe not... street capital fee, on, on just on the water bill. Just, I would have to, but in the ordinance, you're still going to call it a vehicle tax, and then yes. on the water bill itself, you're going to call call it a street fee. Um, let no, me think about it. I just yeah, the well, whole I point think. is to make sure that the residents actually understand what they're being charged for and where to look in the code so that they could submit an affidavit if they don't have a vehicle. I just, I want to make sure that the wording's consistent so that nobody's confused. So, um, yeah, I, we can definitely tweak the words, but how exactly? I mean, give me examples and let me look into it just to make sure that 
everybody understands what the intent is and why it's on there. So it doesn't end up looking like a kind of hidden fee or confuse people. I think that's the key right there is that people understand the intent of this. Um, I am in favor of calling it a vehicle. Capital or whatever. Capital improvement fee. No, a vehicle. Vehicle, fee. vehicle, vehicle tax, vehicle. whatever, because that, that's what it's being written as in the ordinance. So I think if we go ahead and try to name it something else, then we're kind of playing stinky sneaky and we don't want people to figure out what that, this is my opinion. I think you just call it what it is. You call it what it is and you educate the people why we are doing this and what this is money is going for and why we need it. It's and, a streets garage. I mean, that's right. what the whole thing is for. It's not really for road improvements. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, you're, it is. you're incorrect. It is for road improvements. 198,000 we're going to get a year. We're going to pay 160,000 out. We have 38,000 per year every year that can be used for road repair. It's right in here. So, so it should be listed as both then. No, it should be listed as for what it is. It's a vehicle tax. It should be listed as a vehicle tax or whatever word it is. I don't. That's why I asked if we could have something about road repair because the excess money we're going to use for road repair, uh, street so, improvements, however you want so to word it. So just say vehicle tax for road repair on the water bill. But it's for a garage. <laughs> which, I mean, the primary bulk of it is, is for a garage. For, right. Which the, the proper term, I think, would be capital improvements, just okay. like it is for water and sewer. If, okay. If, if uh, Aaron and their firm would believe so, that. Yeah. Is it separate? But so I think, you, I, but I, I, I mean, just you know, to be a lot of talk on this board about transparency. Yeah, that's that's a good place to bring it in. I, I don't, I don't think it would be a, a good idea to try and disguise this fee. No, no, no. I don't think I, that that's what we're trying, trying to do. I think we're just trying to make it to do your point. Just trying to be as as transparent as possible, staying like legal. Right. Like you know, so it's a vehicle tax, right? But that doesn't describe on the bill what we're actually using it for, to your point. The garage. So we have a lot of time between now and the village board meeting to come up with some suggestions for you to that. So I don't think we'll get to that tonight, but I certainly hear what you're saying, and Aaron and I will work together to come right. up with the best solutions we can. But yeah, as you said, with water and sewer, it's capital improvement fund for right. water and sewer. So why isn't this could be well, a capital? It's, it's, under, it's under different statutory authority. Right. So we have to be careful. That's all. It's the same reason that we had to go into a meeting and then change everything and then go to budget so committee because we have to follow the rules. For public works is I, I honestly do believe not just on Facebook but everywhere else in this community, everywhere I go, people appreciate not only how we maintain our streets and how well our department does, but also how we trim the trees and mm -hmm. keep track of everything in this community and maintain it. It's it's Pretty amazing what the, the staff and the resources have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My request would be with this, if this is the budget committee's flavor to recommend to the village board, my request would be is some kind of PR campaign to let people know that this is happening, what it's for, and why. I think that's absolutely necessary. And then before, not just, hey, by the way, April 1, the fee goes into effect. That's the other thing. Is so we like, I know that that's like fiscal, we do that. I'm not saying drag this out six months i'm saying we at least like you know we're talking you know make, we can't just have it go into effect may one without people knowing what it is and it doesn't need to take effect immediately i mean we have some flexibility with that i'm not saying that we wait till december either because we, we can we can be flexible on the because we did that with places for eating tax and we waited too long for things to take shape and go into that two as soon as it's approved by the board we'll come back here within about 30 days with a plan for implementation that's my only concern. Mm -hmm. In fact, we may come to you with at the board meeting with a plan for implementation. But I hear what you're saying about it being inequitable from that regard. But at the end of the day, it goes back to the cost of doing business. And if you think that we have staff or can find money in the budget to hire staff, maybe someday it turns into a vehicle sticker fee at some point. But do you think that, I mean, staff isn't recommending a vehicle sticker fee because of the burden on staff. I'm going to have to lean on them to I say vote no on a vehicle sticker. See, I will. Yes. I will. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. I, mean, so I do I have, have a question. Uh, you are. Yes, sir. Um, so, while I understand they were not put in to say they are ending, the reason why we have a sewer and a water capital fee was because of the water treatment facility plant bond to fund that work. That is ending soon. Is there any? potential so that we zero out additional impact to the community that one of those $10 fees falls off 
and this fee then gets added in. So at the end of the day, you now have a streets fee. You now have a water fee that still goes towards those capital projects. Because I, I have a hard time saying that we're going to institute a fee because we need a building, but it will be in perpetuity because we just need to continue to do stuff. Like that should be a tax referendum that we don't make enough revenue to do the capital projects that we need to do. If it's we have this fee to fund this building, and that is the only way that we can fund that building as the same as it was the only way that it could be funded for the water treatment facility. That is a different argument, but that's not the argument that those first 220 or whatever first two $10 fees have and now this $10 fee. And all we're doing is going around a referendum. Uh, Trustee Kelly, I, I, uh, I won't disagree with your statement. And I, I don't agree with it, but I, I won't uh, argue the statement. What I will say is that we've shared with you our capital uh, capital plan, capital improvement plan, and there are water and sewer improvements um, in the neighborhood of $25 million required in this community. And that those water and sewer fees will not be nearly enough. Uh, once we complete our master plan that you've all authorized with EEI, we expect those that report in sometime in July. Um, it's very likely that additional capital fees will be required in the water and sewer fund beyond what we have now to fund necessary future improvements. So I would answer your question that no, we, we're already planning our five-year capital plan around those existing fees. And the same would be true of the street fee going forward. So if I'm hearing you correctly in that, not only are we talking about this vehicle tax or what a fee or whatever it is, but there is a assumption that in the future we will also have to bring to the board an increase of the other capital fees that are currently on there. That's very likely given the uh, given the capital plan that we shared with you about three years ago and also with the master plan that's been being conducted right now by EEI. So we're authorizing a 50% increase in the fees on the water bills by doing this and then potentially and most likely then trying to add additional. Okay, very well be the case. This is, this is you know, we've all talked, um, you've all spoken up there just tonight about the disinvestment in the community. This in community, this community due, due to financial resources so after 05, oh, excuse me, 08, severely disinvested in this community and its infrastructure in particular. And that's a serious problem for the community. I share that with the board. I think within six months of coming on board here when we gave you the capital plan. This is that capital plan is still on the website. Please look at it. It's very important. This is the stuff that I've been talking about in, in Trustee Coates and Trustee Robinson. For, it, this is all, it, even Trustee Kelly's been a part of this, and I'm not singling out the new trustees, but you guys haven't been exposed to it for as long as we have. The, the amount of things, I use Toby's phrase, that have been, the cans have been kicked for so many years, and here we are. And we everybody wants a beautiful downtown, and everybody wants all this stuff, and everybody wants, you know, that's why we went to the exercise with Coon Creek and stuff, because people have to understand that we have to live within our means. I get it. I totally get it. Okay, but most communities have things like a water main replacement program to replace water mains that have been in the past their useful life. If you look at the water uh, report, that we I think that's on our website too, that EEI did for us some years back when they proposed that second charge or raising it from $10 to $20. I'll, I'll tell you, that is the one time I saw the former mayor red in the face in the middle of the meeting. I sat in this chair, I made the motion to, to approve the fee and then voted against it because we all at the board voted, didn't want to increase the fee on the water bill because we were all sick of paying it. And we made EEI come in and give a detailed explanation as to what that fee was for. Much like staff is doing right this second, which is telling us what this fee is for. You can see it in front of you. The guys can't work. They can't do their jobs. They're tired. We're making them do all the, the stuff in the cold. The trucks are rusted apart. You, the, you see the needs there. I don't like the fees. I don't like. So, so we could, to Trustee Kelly's point, let's go out for a referendum and raise property tax. Sign your name on the line. I don't know. I, realistically, I, I don't. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Yes. And I, I just want to be clear. I did not say that we should go out to referendum and raise taxes. What I said is just adding fees on top of fees is avoiding the need to go to a referendum. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. But what I'm saying is, is that ultimately, this if this board doesn't want to start implementing fees based on tangible evidence provided to us by like professionals, 
and take that advice. Either we bury our head in our sand in the sand like previous boards have done, or we have to take some kind of action. I'm sorry. And I, I Dave, I, I Dave, just one question. Um, how many of the village trustees have actually toured the building at all during work work hours? Has everybody been there? I can say I don't think. No, I don't know. I don't think everybody's been there, no. I haven't been to the police department either. That doesn't mean I don't support the police department. Um, I, 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 think you, I think you'd be looking at it differently if, if, if you mm -hmm. would actually just take 10 minutes and just go over there. Well, now that I know it's so dangerous to go there, I don't <laughs> think it's a good idea for me to be anywhere near it. I'd like to. But it's okay for these guys to work it. Okay. That's why I said I asked, do we need to close them down? Could because we've admitted what the sure. uh, safety issues are over there, and we're going to continue to let them work there with that knowledge that they could burn up, that they could fall, they could hurt themselves, and that puts liability on us because we have knowledge of it. I'd just like to clarify one point that was made earlier in terms of equi equity. Um, the utility fees, the water and sewer fees, are $10 each month. It, it, by monthly for Elgeloy, who uses $3 million, three million gallons of water per month, and they pay the same fees as you would pay at your residence. So that if you want to talk about inequity, that's that's equally inequity. So I, I don't find this discriminatory in that sense. Maybe, maybe as a goal, you know, like when you have spare time, maybe we need, <laughs> to, maybe we need to look at commercial water accounts, billing them at a separate rate. We can look at commercial water bill, sure. I mean, I just maybe maybe we need to look at that to, to everybody's point of let's not try to take it out on the residents. Maybe there's other options and to that. But I'm also trying to be cognizant of what you're saying. You don't want to raise rates on all the businesses so high that they say, heck, with this place, I'll go open up in Gilbert's or right. Pingree or whatever. Well, when, when you compare it to Pingree, they're paying ninety one dollars. We're paying twenty one, potentially thirty one. I don't. Yes, I know. I, I am the first in line to say don't raise my taxes, but if it's going to go for the betterment of the community for the long term, that's that's what we want. People want Hampshire to continue. They want you talk to all, all the residents. And they love this town. They want it to continue. If we had we not approved those two thousand new homes, somebody would have stepped in and annexed all that. And Huntley. Huntley would have had 2,000 more homes into their tax base, and we'd be looking at them no matter what, whether they're in Hampshire or not. They'd be right there. They're no small town in Hampshire either way. This growth, this growth has been coming. I was talking to my wife about this. This growth has been coming since the before the 90s. Randall Road in 1994 at Route 62 and Randall Road was a four-way stop sign. Look at it. I don't even want to drive on that now. I There's blacked, I blacked out Randall Road when it was two lanes. Right. There are three left turn lanes on that, on that intersection now for all directions. I mean, that started this out here, and we can either choose to keep up with it or we can choose to become a ghost town, essentially. I mean, if, if we don't manage this well, this could all be gone. You could be looking at Huntley right there. We were so. asked at the last budget meeting to come up with some solutions, some ways that we can cut the budget. Did do you guys do that? Just curious. Yeah. I mean, I know you're set on this fee. The so. only thing, the only thing that I I'm not set on this fee. But here's the deal. I've asked you five times personally to go over to that village garage. You haven't been there one time. Nope. You have not been there I've to see. Been outside of it. But wait a second. I've been outside. You haven't, you haven't of looked in the open door to see a guy laying in water welding or something, just looking in the door. You have not been over there. So I'm more passionate about getting something that's safe for these guys than anything. Ten bucks is a lot cheaper than anything else that we got going. Period. So I don't I don't think any of us are are saying that we don't need a new public works building. I think all of us are agreeing to that. The question that was asked, and it's a fair question because I was actually just about to ask it, so I appreciate that, Trustee Palestrini, is we left the last general fund meeting and said, we all agree that this building needs to happen. What we'd like to see are what are the options other than just a fee? Are there other options? Please go look at the budget. I believe the phrase was used, nice-to-haves and must-haves. And that's fair. Do you believe that everybody was here tonight? 
because uh, they were told that there's a good chance that their facade program is going to be gone. My, my question is to staff if that motion has been done. But I'm saying, do you think that's why they originally came? Because they heard that we were looking at cutting the facade program out. I'm, I'm the one that told the BDC that I'm the one that recommended that as a potential. And we talked oh. about it at the BDC. So going through the budget, yeah, I can cut $25 here, 50 bucks there. I don't know. That's why I'm asking staff, Trustee Cove. No, no, no. I'm, I'm answering our chairman's uh, question to me. Did I go through the budget? Yes. I went through the budget. Line item after line item. 20 here, 25 there, 15 there, 60 there. Yes. All right, I did the same but, thing. But and the thing that I came up with is I can't come up with 168,000 for 20 years. Can't do it. Yes. Sure, I, we we can cut a fee this year. We might get get by with two years. 20? Not gonna end. Did staff do the same? Yes, Jesse Kelly, Lori, and I, and our department heads all went through the budget, and, and we could not come anywhere close to. Uh, $198,000 for 20 years. There was really, I mean, the budget is very tight as it is. You know, we talked for the entire time. I thought revenue source, source so. of potential revenue. So the answer is yes, we've looked and we don't believe believe it's possible without how severe much budget services. So. How much were you able to find as potential savings to offset this these fees? Nothing. So there is nothing that could be cut from the budget whatsoever. Not in our mind. It was. It is not an essential services, no, sir. Okay. Thank you. That's what I disagree with because there's always room to cut. And that's that's always room to cut right places. But, that's why we but for you to say immediately nothing. I didn't say immediately. That was a month ago. The question was asked. I just answered the question. And you just said okay. I'm not going to. I zero guys. What did you come up with, Trevor? Right. So I did. so I gave a list. I, I submitted it just like I was so, asked, and I never heard back. So what did you what, what was on the list that you submitted? I know what I was, was the total email. amount. What was the total amount that you feel that we oh, could cut for 20 I years? I said specifically I couldn't total it because all I had was the final line item. So what that line item was, I needed to dig deeper into that. I didn't have that information to do it. But as I ex explained to them then too, I said started out with the PR committee request for $12,000 for marketing contractor. That's 12,000 right there. All right, then uh, we're visiting of the health insurance. And Another you thought of the parameters of all of this. I put them down for discussion purposes like we talked about. So revisiting of the health insurance for people that are not employees. So I will tell you this right yeah. now. I'm sorry. Excuse well, me. Can I just ask a question? We're trying to answer the staff here. So could you, you please continue that list? Because Lori and I have investigated those things. And we're prepared to respond to those tonight. Please, please speak and out loud so we can Under, interrupt it, please. Well, I'm, I'm continuing that because I did. I sent this on March 1st, and then on 2nd, I was told that I would be responded to the email below after review it together this week. I haven't heard. So my request then, or my things to consider, was the $12,000 for marketing, the <clears> revisiting <throat> of the health insurance, because covering the entire Families, I didn't think was a really frugal way or, or positive way of using our tax dollars. The discontinuing of the $100,000 facade grant. Administration budget was 14.3% over, over what last year's was. We need to reduce that percentage. I can't give you an exact amount. I'm looking at the bottom line. I don't see You're looking at the administrative is. budget right here. Sit at this table. Okay. Then paper, pens, I mean, everything else, all the contracts, mm -hmm. et cetera, all falls into that as well. Uh, police, and then I know some can't be reduced, but maybe we can reduce some of them. So I, I, I don't know what the exact line items are. So maybe these are just going to be nickels and dimes that I went through. Officer in charge, court overtime, overtime, print advertising forms, no more printed tickets and forms. It's all to be done now via the new computers and squad printers. So why is that still on there? That's something that we can say. Legal services, office supplies, the body cams, they're mandatory, but efforts should be made to seek grant money to offset at least part of it. For streets, and believe me, I know you're as frugal as we can do, there's, there's reductions that could be considered for overtime for emergency only for snow and rainstorms, capital outlay vehicles. Um, I've said we've invested a lot in the police department this year, but training is essential. I know that can't be cut. Some of that is mandated. Some of it's if we're giving them new devices and things to use, they have to be able to know how to use it. Um, 
But disregarding other mandated expenses, what else can be cut at the police department? I would expect the police chief to be able to point some of those out. I can't, looking at just the, the, the line item last amount. Um, but what I said is if we plan to put 1.5 million into public works, what can be cut to offset that? And I was told today zero. And, and, and let me explain that a little bit. I can, you know, I can only I can only say these things so many different ways. Um, when I came here, I, I spent 30 years in the private sector after 20 years, 18 years in the public sector. This was a turnaround business. I have treated this like a turnaround business. That's what this is. This is this was a village in severe financial trouble years ago. When I got here, no, Lori had done an amazing job of being frugal for the last 10 years without a, without an administrator to work for um, or to help her. So she had to do that job as well. It took us three years to get ourselves unburied from the financial backlog that we had. Um, you hadn't had financial reports until just last last summer. So a lot of work has been done. And the answer, when Chief Pan came on board here, you asked about the police department, Chief Pan came on board here, he came before this board and you approved special appropriations for him this year, as well as items that he recommended for next year. Those are over and above our bare minimum essential expenses that we're doing right now. Um, so I, I can't emphasize anymore that no, there is no fat in this budget. There is no fat in this budget to cut. This board has worked very hard for the last, well, for, for the three years that I've been here to be very conscientious about, about our budget. And so there, there's nothing extravagant or, or, or in this budget. The, the things you mentioned, $12,000 for the PR committee, that's for the PR committee to do. Yes, this, this, this committee can recommend that to the village board and if, if the, and the village board will make a decision. The, uh, the, 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 excuse me, the public relations committee did, did request that amount and that's in the budget. And that was, they were, it was voted on by the public, public relations committee. It's not for me to tell one committee and the other committee what they can do versus themselves. This is a decision all of you need to make. Lori did the analysis, spent a lot of time. There's a lot of analysis here on, on dependent coverage for health care. Um, um, our community to the west, uh, where do you know, Genoa pays 99% and the employee pays 1%. There's probably some reason for that. Uh, Lori will share with you. We have a handout to share with you. It's very complex because it's very, it's very large and a lot of work went into it. But we are very average when it comes to what we do with our dependent coverage for health insurance. We are not extravagant at all. It's, it's something that in this in the public sector, that's what is expected. That's what their surrounding communities do. So, Lori, will you share that, please? Yeah, okay. hand up to I'm going to save you guys all a lot of time. If there's any recommendation that comes out of this committee that says that we need to cut employee health benefits for dependents or anything, I will veto the budget, period. We are not cutting employee health benefits. Oh, we, we could we them. could cut them, and then we would be out uh, trying to hire seven new people. Because if I was an employee here, and mm -hmm. and I and I had somebody telling me on on the budget that you're going to cut my family out, I'm leaving. Asta, I'm not. There's a ton of villages hiring. I worked for 15 years in the public sector, and I paid for my medical. Well, then you worked for the wrong public institution I because I worked. And I worked for the public. Again, you worked for the wrong institutions because I spent 17 and a half years working in public education as well, and they had fantastic benefits. They didn't pay worth a darn, which is why a lot of people end up leaving. But they, they but they, they, the the health insurance coverage was phenomenal. So I put forth things to consider. Okay, so let's, go, let's go through. Let, let's go through. No, no, let's go I through. Our employees. Let's go through. I want place. them to have the best. I understand we're a frugal budget, but it really is. It just. I hate the fact that we jump right into a tax increase. To but yet you village. won't take the time to go visit the public works building or take any sense of how the operations of this village work. You want to pick apart the budget line item by line item, black and white, black and white. And I've always respected the work that you've done, but I take issue with this. I really do. Let's go through your list. Denial of the Public Works Committee. Okay, fine. There, this $12,000 isn't specifically for a marketing contractor. That's all the village newsletters and all that kind of stuff. Pardon me? It's a $12,000 increase. Because we didn't budget for the newsletters that go out now. We did last year. No, it's not an increase. We had the same amount of last year. It was twelve thousand dollars to hire somebody. That was the request. So it was a thousand dollars per month for contractual services, and, well, and we're, under, we're under spending that right now. We're spending about five hundred. Because, because the most of it falls on the staff and myself. I won't interrupt you anymore. And, that's, and those are the flyers that go to the water bill. Because they want to hire somebody to do that. 
our newsletter. Yeah, well, they want to they want to hire somebody to help because staff can't handle it. An elected official shouldn't be in charge of the Facebook page. Well, then maybe we need to then think about the newsletter itself. What the the fact that we never had one forever? People that say I don't even read my bills, I don't look at it. People could say, well, where does it say that? Is in the newsletter? And that was your story with a couple people that you talked about too. That nobody, you people aren't reading it. I read it. There's a lot of people that do read it, and I'm not going to, like I said, that was an issue of mine. If you want to cut it, we'll cut it. But then no, we're going to go back. We'll I'm go. not. No, I'm just, just saying it's something to think about because I was asked by staff to come up with some potential options to talk about, and they would get back to me to discuss them. Court overtime. Officer in charge. So you're saying that. By, th by this, you want to cut the ability for somebody that who's supposed to be the guy making the decision I to get paid to, to make those decisions. I said to consider it. But but you have to have you have to have a viable you have to have viable logic behind it. You can't cut court overtime. They go to court on their days off. If they go to court while they're working, now we're hiring another officer to fulfill his responsibility while he's at court. And that officer's on overtime. If we're going to hire to replace a guy that's in court with a, another officer that you don't want to pay overtime to, then we got to hire another one. So then let's figure out the pension and the and the obligations we have for health coverage for another officer that's going to fill in for the cop who has to go to court for whatever incidences he he has. Does that make sense? Yeah, but we're also saving money by what we spent on the new printers and the tickets that we're putting into the cars because still, now they don't have to go to the police to the county building to turn all that in. You still need to pay. You need to pay for the you know the paper, which is a, and you have to pay for the toner and you have to pay for the four hundred dollars. Well, you got to pay for the guy to go to court. We've already we've already approved that. The paper's not perpetual. The toner's not perpetual. Well, the the printers are also going to be broken in a couple of years too. So do we not do those as well? Well, you're going to have to. Then I have to do the paper as well. Well, you're just saying that you're saying that we don't we no more printed tickets. They did print every single ticket. It's just not going to come in the book. It's not going to come there. So they can easily do it in the car. It saves time. They don't have to go back to the station. Yeah, those are those are. Costs and you have to have. I think there's a statute. You might have to check on that uh, as far as an officer in charge on each shift. Well, I think it's part of the FOP. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's things in there that I understand. That's why I said I don't know. These are th these are things that I saw that went up in the last budget. Can we look at those? Oh, I, That's what I put. I didn't say we're cutting that. I said let's look at it. I saw the increase from one year to the next, and I thought it was worth at least looking. I struggle. I struggle. I struggle with the fact that we have been operating on such a lean budget. We have done everything that we can possibly do from my perspective with staff, with officers. Officers have left us. Public Works employees have left us because of not getting paid what they feel that they're worth. They, uh, they've left us not only that because they feel that they've, been, they've burnt out because of overtime and they're not afforded the same opportunities that they are in other public institutions. I, we couldn't afford to paint this room that you're sitting in right now. Well, we did it on a weekend because we couldn't afford to hire. And we couldn't stand really? people walking into this room thinking that we were a bunch of clowns. That's why this guy's out on a frickin' Sunday out front, because we can't afford to hire somebody. You two, God bless you to shave the budget. But remember this. You want 198000 you got to shave off that budget for over 20 years. Good luck because you ain't going to do it. I've been here for over eight years, and you know what? We ran this thing as into the ground year after year after year. You're not going to find it. Unless, I'll challenge you and Mr. Kelly to find it. And what's the first thing we asked you I, to do when you came on board? Find a way to build a port port. Well, and connect a, a water, yes. north-south water system for over a million dollars in Streetscape and Highland Avenue, right. Park and Rand. It's unrealistic to think Trust that you can shake. You can run a, a a thing kicking the can down the road for 20 years, and all of a sudden you're going to shave 198,000 off of a budget for 20 years. That's so. That's so not just because sense. my my question was, per the last meeting, we had made an ask. Mr. Hedges and Miss Lyons said they did look at it. That there's nowhere they could cut. That was my question. It wasn't going through and saying find 198 and cut things it was 
is there a possibility at an at another alternative because i think we do the community a disservice if we don't try to look at all options and it sounds like there are no other options i think that the facade improvement program tracy kelly was probably the most obvious um I, i've forgotten your term now but need versus want and i think that was the most obvious i, I think it was very apparent in this room tonight where the board feels what the board feels about that uh, anything else that would add up to another $98,000 would require personnel or severe cut services. And that's not something that I think this board wants. If you want, if you instruct me to come back with $150,000 with the cuts, I will do it. It'll be very painful. Yeah, no, and, and, and your answer was spot on to what the question was or the request. It was just take a look and let us know if there is another way. Thank you. And, and you came back and said, there isn't. You took a look. You and Miss Lyons took a look, and there isn't another way. I trust the staff. We hire good people. We have to trust the recommendation. It's not a matter of me wanting to take it out. I mean, I it's I don't want to be putting a ten dollar charge on the water bill. I have been perfectly clear about this. I fought it the last time. I've been perfectly clear about it. But all the facts are in front of you, so you can either. Look at the facts and read what they are, the absolute facts of the situation, or put your head in the sand. Or just ignore it and hope it goes away. Those are your three options. So it's going to cost more. It's not going to go away. I think we've talked about this long enough. Um, is there a motion? Because I think we need one. 90,000. Yeah. On page four, section E, uh, um, reduce the rate for certain owners on this tax, which is uh, local government, uh, school district, uh, military service personnel, school district, etc. On that, is any consideration in there for the senior citizens? Um, Karen, are you with us still? I'm, I'm still sorry. here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Aaron, the question was asked, could this could a discount for the waiver also for the fee be applied to senior citizens in addition to those waivers that are already in the uh, ordinance? I mean, that is completely up to the board. However, if they want additional exemptions, of course, I'm happy to write it how I am instructed to do so. Yeah, we would have a statutory authority to exempt seniors. Yeah, seniors can be exempted from certain things. Well, do you know offhand roughly what our, we have a senior discount for them? We do. Um, okay. yeah, for garbage. Yeah, for garbage. garbage. Uh, yeah, let me you, see. If you do for God, we cannot. I'm, I'm I want to say it's about 300, about 10% of our accounts, just from memory. But did you did you suggest an exemption or a discount? Um, I, I'm not saying that I shouldn't pay it. I'm just saying uh, I think mm -hmm. it's what we do with other things. Maybe there should be a, maybe a reduction. Uh, it's ten dollars. That's all. Agreed. That might be an easier sell within the community too. Yeah. If we were to do something for the seniors, okay. maybe a reduction. Yeah, he's saying. Yeah, he's saying that there's not a. He doesn't think that they not should they shouldn't pay it. He's no, I, do some kind I of think it's just mirror that our bill. Oh, yeah. so fourteen percent of our of our accounts are seniors. When it comes to garbage collection, so fourteen percent of fourteen percent of uh, one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. So that'd be about about twenty what twenty-eight thousand dollars less per year. That we'd be collecting. That's yeah. on that's on full. You're not paying enough. Right. Right. Which which would be a five dollar fee. Uh, it, it would it would be it would be a precedent that we don't do that for the water and sewer fees. Honestly, well. Yes, you're correct, but there's there's just because you're a senior citizen doesn't mean that you're not going to use the same water as 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 a single person. Like if you're a, a senior citizen, as well. What? No, no, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But you're only going to have the one car either way. Not if you're two or three senior citizens in the building. Unless you're my own house single. That's true. Yeah. I did. I have to read that. Yeah. I might have four cars too for all you know. Let's <laughs> see your city stickers. <laughs> I don't think that has been the human violation. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Anything else? No. That was just uh, something. Okay. Then I would um, 
I'll entertain a motion to move forward with the motor vehicle tax in order to support the purchase slash financing of a streets building. And other capital projects, correct? Other capital. Oh, we're, we're moving forward with a motion to recommend. I'm what, going with what you guys want and what you're saying, so I'm putting it into a motion as a positive. So, repeat. Motion to recommend that the village board do pass the fee increase. It, the vehicle motion to move forward. For capital improvements. Yes, so what, so, yes, what Mr. Head just said. So, it's, I mean, as I just wrote it down, is motion to move forward with a motor vehicle tax in order to support the purchase slash financing of a streets building and other capital projects. Streets capital projects. Streets and road improvements. Isn't that a part of streets? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's your streets. motion, Professor Robinson. Make it as you wish. Yes. Yes, I would like road improvements and, and road improvements. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. Sounds more teacher like. Well, uh, in in the spirit of transparency, I think people need to know. Right? I'm not getting on the case. I'm just saying I think people need to know this, and it starts now. We're making a motion now, so they need to know this is where your money's going. So, Trustee Robinson has made the motion. Is there a second? Uh, if you please reread the motion you have uh, written down. Motion to move forward with the motor vehicle tax in order to support the purchase slash financing of a streets building and other capital projects uh, and other streets department capital projects and road improvements. Second. Yeah, okay. you can just make that in the form of a recommendation, please. Yes, recommend. Motion to recommend. Do have. Or well, let's move yes. forward, so. Motion to recommend moving forward. Okay, and we will do a roll call vote. Trustee Cove? Aye. Trustee Robinson? Aye. Trustee Palestrini? No. Right. Moving on to the next is the fiscal year 24 budget presentation. Ms. Lyons? All right. Let me just remind the board that we've been through the entire budget now through two previous meetings. So this is a very high level overview for those of you who have not been at the previous meetings. So um, I will share my screen. I, so as I go through here, I'll try to um, scroll down, if you will. Um, this is the exact um, preserver document that you have um, in hand. And I just wanted to point out that um, I'm going to concentrate on the general fund um, and the changes that have been made to that. Um, so here we go. Um, we do have the preliminary tax extensions now available. Uh, the county issued those this morning, so I have updated uh, the property tax uh, revenue expected for fiscal year 24. Uh, we calculate this at 98% of the extension, and the only change was uh, the change was $131. So um, I'm pleased that my estimate was was pretty good. Um, Going down through uh, the additional changes that have been made to this particular budget, um, I adjusted the administrative services reimbursement. I added the de-escalation grant that um, the village is receiving um, for the Bertram uh, Police Department equipment. Um, we had a meeting on Tuesday. No, last Thursday, maybe last Tuesday or Wednesday with DR Horton and their um, rental communities. So I did increase the building permits, the trans uh, the associated transition fees, as well as the building inspections up to 100 new residential um, residences that added approximately $64,000 to permits, $12,500 to transition fees. Um, I did uh, move some rent and park expenses because while we'll do preliminary engineering, we actually expect that to happen in actual construction in fiscal year 25. 
um, you know yeah um it, it's going to take a lot of bidding and all that kind of good stuff so it, it'll be a while before that project plus comes the money's going to gonna actually show up comes to fruition yes we're still in the application stages of the grant um we told you say you by the time it gets here uh, so um i did include the uh the revenue for um the proposed motor vehicle infrastructure or use fee that we were talking about we'll get to that terminology um <laughs> at a future time um but that is included in this budget now um uh, if you will recall, the original budget that was shown showed the facade granted only fifty thousand in anticipation of your agreement that that is a um, a worthwhile and worthy project. I did up that to one hundred thousand dollars. Probably the biggest change here, um, uh, which was not in the original budget, is a transfer um, from the motor fuel tax fund. You will recall that a few years ago when we were struggling to uh, balance the budget, we proposed using motor fuel tax for street salaries. And that is possible, but this demonstrates that we really are not getting enough operating funds to pay all of our expenses. So I do propose that we transfer motor fuel tax, but you have to keep in mind that um, that will take $130,000 away from um, major road construction. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if this will have to go on an ongoing basis, but um, that's how we're getting this budget to balance. How does that then affect the what we just discussed with the $10 approval? So it it does not affect that okay i mean you, you could ask and i'll be perfectly honest you could say lori i want you to transfer two hundred thousand dollars not 130 to gain another seventy thousand okay which which we definitely could do but i think we all need to keep in mind and um if you'd like for me to provide you with a i mean i could bring up the capital plan right now and show you we've got 15 million dollars in this and 10 million dollars in that um we really it, just telling me it didn't affect it is yeah I'm okay fine. okay all right keep going <laughs> keep going all right um in the police department area um so that oh, let's see i think i talked about all the admin changes oh um we do want to assure that there is proper um emergency warning coverage for the north end of the currently active Prairie Ridge subdivision. So I did add a storm signal expense um, in the admin area, which would put a pole and storm emergency storm siren um, at the wa drinking water treatment plant on Harmony Road. So that would help us cover both the north end of the current development and then part of the development that's proposed by Crown. Do we need to pay for that on our own? Yes. Oh, yeah. So we expended all, we, we are collecting early warning fees. Sure. Um, Can we get a grant from the feds over it? Uh, we could probably look, but I doubt that there's going to be one available because we're, the problem is, is that we typically don't, don't, Unless it's like a member initiative type situation, like with what happened with Tammy Duck, we're, we're almost automatically exempt from federal funding in most cases for emergency stuff. Based on our most of this type of community income. Yeah. We lost it in the water connection. We couldn't get emergency funding for that. Yeah, we couldn't get it for two other things that we tried for. We're almost automatically exempt. Um, so let's see, um, in the, that's all for the administrative area. In the police department, um, I discovered a formula error, and so, um, it related to, um, Gina, our records clerk. She is not, um, a full-time 40-hour employee, however, she is, um, Part time? Strongly part time and that, eligible for benefits. So if you look 
um, at this particular line item I'll highlight it, salaries part-time. You'll see that um, uh, we have part-time salaries that are not meeting our budget expectation um, for this fiscal year because Gina has been categorized in the full-time area. I've moved her back out. In other words, changed the, or got that formula correct in, in this particular budget and um, have increased that particular line item to include her her remuneration. So the salary is part-time, that's for one person? That's for actually, um, it covers the crossing guard, our part-time police officer. Um, Doug spoke about a part-time detective as well as Gina. So it's actually four individuals, um, probably. Could have, could have just said four. four. Cut, yep. cut minutes off there. Sorry. Um, uh, we increased, I increased the legal um, expense line item for the police department because I feel that the um, the current FOP contract may go into negotiations into next fiscal year, so that's included in there. And then um, other professional fees has been updated to include an increase in leads online, which is an online subscription that um, we'll have to pay. Um, in the streets area, uh, let's see if we get that. Um, the biggest change in this particular area was to increase the sidewalk uh, maintenance up to $30,000. Um, that does not include the safe routes to school, but it does cover both the 50-50 program that we currently have um, and, and $25,000 for us to repair um, needed sidewalk repairs that the village will, will take care of. So um, none of the other line items have changed. And we come to a bottom line um, of a revenue and excess of expenses of $556. Um, so Trustee Kelly asked me, and I did this for each of the funds, to include the estimated starting fund balance, where we'll end up at the end of the year, and then uh, roll that forward to where we will end um, for fiscal year 24. So these are our rough estimates still at this point, but um, you'll find that in each of the funds. Uh, do you want to go through all of the other Why things? Why don't you give us the, the high overview, the, the things that you changed from the last time? Okay, so um, as I kind of described in the in the general fund, that was really the fund that received the uh, majority of the changes. Um, I did update all of the um, sub funds of the general fund, so those are would be the impact and transition fee accounts that um, where we're collecting money on building permits. Those really, for the majority of them, they don't affect the village's budget per se because we hold those as liabilities and then pay them out to the various districts. So those have been updated. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that's seen a significant impact. I think that those are really the, the major changes that I have um, made to the, to the budget since we last talked. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Lyons? So essentially what you did at the board meeting this evening was set the public hearing. And um, uh, I will go through all of these uh, things one more time before I put this out on the front counter. We post it on our website. And then um, there will be a notice in the Daily Herald that this um, we will be having the public uh, hearing on April 6th. Uh, and then this has to be um, available for public inspection for at least 10 days prior to the ordinance in which it's adopted. So we'll be well in advance of the 10 days um, because we anticipate uh, doing that ordinance at the second board meeting in April. If that is a draft ordinance, a draft budget, and it could change between now and the board meeting. Yes. So if you see something that looks unusual and you have any questions, we so this is going to be a tentative budget that's posted. We can come back with a final actually on um, April 20th, is it April 20th, um, with with changes, and then we would highlight those again. I have a question. Yes, sir. 
Um, I don't know a page. We don't have any pages. I'm so. sorry. What's um, your account? On the road and bridge fund. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, there was a change there. So um, the road and bridge fund, uh, those are monies that come from the uh, township. When we annex roads, some of their uh, levy comes to the village. So that accounts for any roads that are added. So what is your question? Um, on expenses, we have construction for 135000 Is that what I think it is? So um, hang on just one quick second. Really rich. OK. 4790. Yep. So uh, no. Um, yeah, that's a good point, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> Um, yes, that is going to be, um, we propose to change or resurface Whitetail Circle. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yep. So that actual expense is something around $188,000 plus or minus. We don't have firm estimates yet, um, but we'll be essentially expending this full fund and then um, using the transportation fund. for Whitetail Circle? They say it needs to be resurfaced. Okay. I got a crack out in front of my house. There's a freaking car in it right now. <laughs> By my house. No, the street's good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I don't. I'm okay, not, thank I'm you. Just asking. <laughs> I'm not a pro. Dave knows what he's looking for. There could be underlying that, you know. Maybe there's a camper that lives down in the street. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, so, the, the road. so it's probably good to look yes, at the yeah, transportation yeah. fund as well. Yeah. That's fund number 64. You can just say that. Huh? You can just tell them what the balance is. Okay. Yeah, we, we have, unless we have no, no what pages. <laughs> Right, so it starts with six four, like so it's towards the back. They're all in numerical order um, by account number, so sixty four. What are you in? Transportation. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I'm looking Yes. Yep. Okay. okay. Guys, these are the transportation impact fees that we collect for developments. Mm -hmm. And Laura, could you explain what the balance is? And yeah, so the balance in this in this fund, we expect it to start in fiscal year 24 of $1,336,000. So it sounds like we're really hoarding money, but we're not. Um, you have to keep in mind that um, many of the uh, small water mains that are requiring replacement, so like those four-inch water mains, are actually in the middle of these roads. So not only will we have to repair the water um, infrastructure, sometimes the sewer infrastructure, but we'll also be doing um, a road replacement. So, um, you know, these are all, it, it, it sounds like a lot of money, but when you add up all the bits and pieces, um, you know, we're saving to not have to bond out some of these projects. There's a, there's a, uh, a good opportunity that I think I believe that we'll really enjoy hearing. Um, there's a lot of talk uh, during the big, during the Olmstead annexation agreement about Big Timber School and whether we need to stop by it. And as you know, we have a crossing guide there now and contemporary markings, which King County agreed to. Uh, King County has been studying now during the school year, and they, they've determined that based on the pedestrian traffic counts that a stoplight is required at that intersection. At the new school? Yeah, yeah. the new school. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let me tell I think you, we told them that. I can tell you the good news is that uh, uh, Kurt Nyka, who's the assistant director of PayDot, uh, called me just this week to tell me that, and then he went on to say that we uh, we would we always use first start with a what he calls an interim light string light, basically two two telephone poles and a string, and uh, and and the necessary crosswalk and everything that would go with it, including the, the push button like is necessary. Um, they have another uh, similar stoplight in another location that they're going to be removing in the next month, and he's offered to provide that as as their any kind of contribution along with all the preliminary, excuse me, all the electrical engineering work and all, all the pre-approvals required. This project would probably take us a year and a half if we start from scratch. He wants to get it done in the next 60 days. I thought he was trying to get it done before school starts. He said, oh, I want to get it done before school ends. So uh, this is a, this is a, we have a meeting scheduled for week after next with Crown and, this, and District 300 because they're also partners in this arrangement. Um, and uh, so, Kane County has offered up a considerable in-kind contribution, in my mind, 
as well, excuse me, as well as the control box, which is one of the most expensive things at any stop, but they're going to provide a control box from the satellite as well. So they told us that the total cost for all the parties involved will be about $185,000. And, and that's this is exactly what this fund is designed for. So if the village chooses to participate in the contribution, we have the funds available. When I told Lori this story, I expected her to say, yeah, but we don't have the money. And she said, that's one thing that we do have funds for. Those are set aside just for this type of thing. How much do we pay the crossing guard? Do you know roughly? Um, just ballpark? $25 an hour, I think. Loaded. No, I mean... I mean, we, we, we 50 grand a year or something? Oh, no, no, no. no I think it's... Like oh, that's right. Five, five, we, have Andy Frank, and we have yeah, we have two different arrangements. So the Andy Franklin is pretty easy to get. It's about, it's like three hours a day, and I think $25. Should we choose to not participate in that? Does the stoplight still go in? It's going to be required by King County, so ultimately right. somebody's going to have to come up with it. We're going to squeeze... Uh, District 300, I've already talked to Jennifer Porter there, and also again, uh, also this. I think the country education they, they did the they did this traffic study during COVID. That's where I'm going because I know down. the traffic study was done during COVID. There was no traffic. There was no we, told this. we told Crown this. Yes, and I and the school board. So you said Dan is going to be there. Okay, be, okay. Yeah. I think Crown. I think, Crown I think everybody's it. saying we don't have any money for that, but. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'll be a it'll be a conversation. Crown should have but I think it's I, th I think it's good news that the cost will be yes. I mean, as soon as he said stoplight, I'm thinking a million two. Right yes. Away. And uh, I'm thinking you know seventy two in states. And it's just so near that. That is why we, that's why we pushed so hard when that was getting approved or proposed and approved because right. but. Okay, and we're also going to go back and look at both traffic studies, both the new one from Prairie, Prairie Ridge North, as well as Oakstead, and see the common alleys. You know, it seems like there's a lot more traffic up on Big Timber than there is on uh, uh, Harmony. Harmony. On Harmony. Yeah. But there are also more homes being built in Prairie Ridge now than there will be in Oakstead. So $180,000 all in, and then all the parties would need to split it? Well, that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. Maybe or is this for three hundred? That's Seriously. called negotiation. No, I no no no. I'm saying it's not one hundred thirty hundred eighty thousand dollars per no, party. No, that's just one hundred eighty all in. I, 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 I had to call him back because Lori didn't believe me. He said it's required, <laughs> and it's not required that we get in on it. Well, it, it, I will say this. So this conversation happened uh, last last summer, and I believe I shared it with all of you. At that time, uh, when they asked for an access permit, so you have to have an access permit to leave the school district onto a any from any business onto a road, onto a county road. So they needed an access permit. And that's normally just applied for by the developer. It's, it's routine. In this case, the county, uh, excuse me, KDOT required that both the village sign that, that permit application and the D300 sign the permit application. And so in response to that, Kurt Nyken then sent me an email with an old agreement that is probably older than any of you on the board, I believe, that read that if the village requ requests a stoplight on a county road, the village is responsible for paying for it. He said, therefore, the village will be responsible for paying for this. I said, no, we're not requesting a stoplight. You're requiring it. And he said, well, you're just mincing words. And I said, no, we're not mincing words. And 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 we don't have to decide that now. Let's wait and see if it, if it's actually required. So that was the agreement. And that's in writing that once, once this is required, we will sit down and discuss that. So now I still believe that that agreement is not, does not address the situation. So I don't believe the village is obligated. I don't believe the county. I believe the, the county is the one requiring it. They also receive large transportation fees for every development. Um, $2,500 per home, I think, is the county transportation fee. And Dan also made a very good point right away. His, very, his first response was to the county. That's what those fees are for. And they said, no, we have other plans for those fees. So uh, I think that can but the county did respond with a significant any kind of contribution and, and is, is willing to consider something that, other than a million dollar step. So I think it's really good news. Um, and I think we'll negotiate an arrangement, the best arrangement we can. Great. Best Great. for all of the kids. We'll, yes, but that will be something that will be um, possibly addressed before this budget is approved, but more than likely we may put something in there just to cover that mm -hmm. because that fund is otherwise just sitting there waiting for the next project. So. And I'm sorry for taking so long, but I thought that was something really important. So, in short, that, that is a planned expense. That Correct. No. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Thank I you, slides. Yes. Thank you for all of your work and everything. Um, thank you all for tolerating us. At this point, then, I believe I need a motion then to recommend 
the budget? Correct, Mr. Matthews? Um, that's your choice. Maybe there's no requirement that the budget committee recommend, but that's that has been your practice since you've been chair. Last year you did. Last year you did. Is there such a motion? I will move to recommend the, the this budget to the village board. Second. Um, no. Trustee Cove. What? Voting on it? Oh no, we have to give the answer if there's any, is there any questions. So Aaron and them can comment or no? That's fine. Well, they're not on the committee. They're not on the committee. So. Uh, aye. Are there any other questions? All right, Trustee Cove. Aye. Trustee Robinson. Aye. Trustee Palestrini. Yes. Motion passes. Is there any other announcements? This has been one of the most um, complicated budget um, conversations that I've been involved in. Uh, and so I know for staff it's been arduous trying to figure out which direction is coming, which one's going. I want to thank all of you for vetting this through the committee structure for all of your time and efforts through this and your leadership during this process. It's not easy. I know it's not easy. Not everybody agrees. That's not what we're, we're not all meant to agree. But you guys are doing one heck of a job, and I really appreciate it. Same, and that goes to staff. And I, I thank you as well, um, Madam Chairman. It's, it, it has been a uh, challenging couple of months. We've had a lot going on, but we have tried to do as much as we can to support in through this process. Any, any other announcements? And then entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye